Good evening, and welcome to the Planning Board meeting of Monday, May 13th. Um, our first order of business is to open and consider continuing the continued public hearing for 76 Main Street. Tell me again, John, when they want to be back. June 10th. June 10th. At what time? They did not specify a time, but they would like a, an hour blocked off. So what is the June? Oh, let me entertain the motion to open the continued public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So they would like to continue to June 10th. And what, what do we have on the June 10th agendas? We have 7.30 reorganization, because it's after the election. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, and 7.35 is the continued public hearing for Maspinock Woods. We have the uh, I-95, I-90, I-495 presentation and the um, 76 Main Street. And 76 Main Street. 76 Main Street. And then master plan Im implementation minutes and pre possible presentation about the Lumber Street Main Street improvements. Possible presentation about the Lumber Street Main Street what? Improvements. So oh, the Frank, intersection? Frank asked to talk to the engineer. I gotcha. Yep. And still trying to work out the details. So okay. that may happen that meeting. It may happen in the week. All right, so um, I recommend, so Maspinock Woods, we very rarely see them come in, so I recommend we schedule um, 76 Main Street at the same time, 7.35. Um, and then give them an hour. And then put um, the 495 discussion at 8.30 so we don't keep pushing that out. Does mm, that sound? That's a good point. Does that sound okay? I just have one thought. Uh, is there a way that we can reach out to the Maspinock Woods people and tell them that they, I mean, I feel like they're always on the agenda and they're never here. I wonder if we can at least well, tell them that, hey, look, you either got to. I feel like we can tell them that it's not a guarantee that they'll get continued next time. So if they call for the continuance, okay. I feel like we can tell them that, you know, the planning board has, you know, considered it each time favorably, but won't necessarily um, and would, you know, rather know when they're ready to come in front of us and then come and schedule a time to come in front I'm, of us. I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure that we communicate something to them. Yeah. That mm -hmm. yeah. I have a suggestion. I have no idea if it's legal, but can we <laughs> <laughs> wait? We'll check on that. <laughs> that we can actually wait for plans from them before we schedule them. We have a So, yeah. What's so it's it? from yeah. So if we can say the new we're not going to even right? bother putting you on the schedule until we have the plans. Except that when we we're continuing it, we have. But to we state have the, the plans. Yeah, we have and they everything. still haven't shown up. They just they're, they're, they're not ready or they're not oh, right. available. That's really so. Right. In the meantime, too, for the, the, the units that they want to change, which is similar to something we have done in the past with a public hearing, they send midstream. They send in those plans and. Uh, so you may have already seen them with the question like, do you think this is mine over me? <coughs> in the yeah. meantime, the, um, uh, Pete Barberi has actually decided that probably better to consider them major so that we would be able to handle it all at the same time and get it, and get it done. However, I haven't, re I haven't received his abutters list or um, a fee mm -hmm. to uh, get that process started. So I gave him until Wednesday. Okay, so see, there you go. That's fascinating. <laughs> so let's, um, let's first vote for um, 76 Main Street to 735 to 835 on June 10th. I'll Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we have them set. Um, you can. They are not going to be heard tonight. Nothing will be said tonight about 76 Main Street. That's correct. That's fine. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Slight update. Do you want me? No, we're not going to. We're not going to. We're not going to. We can't hear anything because we've not, just continued well, it. Not about the plan, but not about the selectmen have forwarded it for expedited review. So we can have forwarded what? The bylaws that passed the town meeting regarding the property. Okay, so let's talk about that later. Okay. Um, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with us, right? It's just uh, it's just a piece of information that, that, that the public might want to know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so an approach for Maspinock Woods. Hmm. Um, Uh, 
Do you want to say we won't continue again? I mean, the alternative is to... Uh, it will already continue. Yes, but to not, if next time, okay. if they don't show up next time on June 10th, mm -hmm. um, to tell them that we won't necessarily favorably consider a continuation? Yeah, I, my opinion, I think that we tell them that we very well may not consider a continuation, and if they need more time, they need to withdraw. Yeah. and resubmit when they're actually ready to be heard. How's everybody feeling about that? I, I actually have been in complete agreement. We've been I agree. Or, or could they, we ask them to provide a more detailed explanation of why? Because if for some reason they're held up on Conservation Commission, like I, I sort of understand that that might not be their fault. They're still working through something. But if there's no reason, just like, I don't know. I've been on the planning board almost a year, and they've been on the agenda at least a half dozen times, and I've, I've never seen them. Okay. So, I mean, I agree that stuff happens, but that's why you need to, to I, me, that's why you need to take it seriously when you do have a spot. It's because sometimes those things do happen. So, I, and I, also on, in this case, with this, I'm going to come and tell us. I mean, don't don't send a note and expect to continue. Let's come and talk to us. Okay. Right. Get through some something, right? Even if you can't get through everything. It, it would be good to have a couple of guidelines. There don't have to be rules here, but just some guidelines. If you're going to ask for multiple continuances that to your point either a you show up and explain why or b some type of explanation as to again why you're act asking for such continuance because it, 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 it makes the scheduling all that much more difficult when this happens right. continually and there's no from their point of view there's no downside right so I and I don't, you know, we we're, we always want to be sort of cordial and easy to work with, but at some point, I think you've been overly cordial. I know, at some point, <laughs> and we never see him, right? So it's all, it, it all happens offline. Um, so that's, I think that that's, um, if they request another continuance for the June 10th meeting, um, make sure that it's our recommendation that they um, either keep the appointment and update us as much as possible or they withdraw and resubmit when they're ready. And that the request for continuance won't necessarily be favorably received by the planning board. So would you like that response to be in response to a request for continuation of the June 10th hearing to yes. the June 24th hearing? Yes, yeah, if they request another continuance offline without coming, um, I, you know, I, that, does that sound right to everybody? Yes. Okay, yes. that's to me as well. Um, okay, so we do not have another um, hearing until 7.30, but we do have, uh, we have minutes we can do. So I'll entertain a motion on approving the minutes from the 4 8, 19 meeting. I have um, a couple of comments. Sure. Can we move them and then? Sure. Okay. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, comments. Okay, um, needless to say, I paid very close attention to what I said. <laughs> <laughs> on page five in the first paragraph, um, maybe I said what it says that I said, but what I intended to say was that we're not talking about a special permit or one particular property, but an entire zone. And it's just flip flopped. Page okay, five. Let me just give it to me later on. I'm sorry? You want to just give it to me later on? Sure. If nobody has a problem with what I'm saying? I do not. No. And my other comment is on page two, also a comment from me. Mm -hmm. um, when we were talking about screening mm -hmm. for solar farms, I believe I said it should be s that the review of that is subjective, not objective. And maybe the word should be objective, but the process is subjective, is what I did say. So I'll, I'll get with you later and okay. show you exactly where. Just point out where they are. Where Anybody else have any changes to suggest? All right, so um, are, uh, I will, is everybody okay with those changes as presented? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, I took um, great pleasure in sharing Mr. Clark's Clarkie's Creed. <laughs> It's actually very good uh, wisdom from 20 years ago. <laughs> I know. And having heard it before, I think it's a subject that's better brought up at your next meeting. 
So yeah, the beginning no, of yoga. Is. I, I agree. Okay. I agree, but I just wanted I wanted to suggest that we tuck it into the folder and the discussion for um, the growth study committee that Carol's probably going to chair for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yes, and that meeting is what day and time? It is. There's a special meeting. It's May 29th at 8 p.m. Um, we're going to meet here to um, talk about the growth study effort, structuring it, um, structuring the, the committee, whatever the committee is, the approach, whatever the approach is. Um, the stakeholders, I would recommend people think about what stakeholders we want to make sure we include. Um, what are what are people's burning questions? I think we all know many of them, but if <coughs> if there are more burning questions, um, definitely bring them. Um, and just sort of getting um, some sort of handle, potentially a proposed timeline, that kind of thing for a growth study effort. So. Just one yes. question, just a yes. procedural question. Mm -hmm. So that meeting is May 29th. That's after the election, mm -hmm. but it's before the June. 10th meeting when we mm. reorganize and I'm wondering if we should reorganize on typically we reorganize so the very first meeting it's a good thing to bring up yeah okay. typically we probably should do that um, so one thing is I will not be there on the 29th I don't know if that puts a that's okay issue. yeah I think that's okay will we have other staff support on the, will we have other staff support on the 29th uh, I don't know if you would be able to be there. I don't. I, Elaine sure. is out this week, so yeah. I can't ask her okay. right now. Yeah. So somebody will have to co co either commit to doing minutes for us or doing them off the. Um, the rec are, we are being. Re are we going to be recorded on the 29th? Is that on the schedule to be recorded on May 29th? Our meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, good. That'd be important. All right. So you won't be here. Um, I. It is. It is typical to reorganize the very first, first meeting, meeting yes. so I think we should do that. Yes. I think that's a good point. Yep. <clears throat> Are you ready? I have, I have a great idea for you, Gary, actually. <laughs> I have all these plans. Um, I'm feeling so nostalgic. <laughs> um, okay, so our very next meeting is Wednesday at 6.30 at TJ's. And we will be thanking um, Carol and Fran for their service to the planning board. And we, um, we mean that sincerely. This planning board has been a better board because of um, Fran and Carol's participation. Um, very sorry to see them go. Um, and hope that, um, I know Carol's going to stick around on Zach. And I feel like there's a spot for both of Some them <laughs> <laughs> on future work, um, either the Zach or certainly the growth study thing. So I hope that you both consider that because you, you have a very um, a very good voice on this board and the experience that that study effort is going to need. So it's going to be big. I just wanted to confirm we're not going to be televised on Wednesday. <laughs> I don't believe we'll be televised on Wednesday, and I don't believe we're going to talk about any relevant business on no. Wednesday. No. But people are welcome to come and Members observe. Of the <laughs> it is, it is a, a posted meeting. Um, uh, and Kobe and John, you're very welcome to join us. I know that it's been a pretty uh, meeting heavy couple of weeks. But you know, all the better. Um, I also wanted to remind people that I am going to go out um, to Legacy Farms North at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, and it's posted in case um, anybody else wants to come. It's not a public hearing. Um, it's just to go out and, and scope out the situation that they are experiencing and expect to experience for the next couple of years. I would have loved to come, but yeah. I can't. Well, we'll I think that we'll be talking about it again, and we'll go out. Um, I think it was a good suggestion. I think it was Gary that had it to go out and see it at uh, bus school, time. Yes. school bus time, um, and I may just do that on my own. <laughs> but. Um, this isn't something that's going to be resolved really quickly, and it, and, uh, it would be, um, I just want to make sure that, that somebody is going out to just uh, meet with them, talk with them, find out what they're experiencing, um, and then uh, see if there's a way that we can um, be meaningful in the process to find a solution with those folks. 
Um, <clears throat> what is the address? Do you remember the address? Yeah, I have it in my calendar. Oh, 16 Redwood Path. 16 Redwood Path is where we're meeting at 9 o'clock on Saturday if anybody is interested in being there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask, if everybody is amenable, and of course it could change um, as soon as we have a new board, but my idea was to keep at the uh, items to be considered at any time some of the items that are um, always important, Zach updates, well, liaison updates from planning board members of, of any sort. Um, master plan updates should be there. Um, the 495 exchange. Um, uh, and also I would think the, um, you know, the growth study work, however that shapes up, should be at the bottom there so that we can update the public or ask questions anytime and have it not be a surprise. Um, so if we can do that, that would be really helpful. Um, so uh, does anybody have um, future agenda items to recommend? Oh, master plan implementation status? Yeah, yep. Um, and uh, we, could, we could probably put that on the agenda for the 10th. Um, at let's see, 8:30 was 4:95. How long should we have for that? I'm not sure how long we have, but I mean. Well, how long would you do? You think we? Half hour. Okay, yes, so we, use, we have it penciled in for half an hour. The and so then maybe nine o'clock master plan updates. And and definitely put the growth study uh, topic at the bottom there because it'll just be getting started, and we'll want to be able to uh, at least update people on that. Um, do uh, it, I wanted to um, also? We don't. Let's see. Dun, 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 we don't have it on here, but to find out if we have planning board liaisons up there, it would be a good time at the beginning of the new planning board session if Zach could tell us what is in the works, mm -hmm. and we could do a <coughs> brainstorming on what might we might add to the churn absolutely okay yeah. great idea mm -hmm. okay and then one other thing um the sort of update on what's going on with the climate change um impact um work yeah, as far yeah. as yeah what what we can do about that and maybe having a liaison from the planning board do that as well okay work with john yeah some of these um some of these efforts, like the master plan um, and the growth study efforts, um, just throwing it out there for consideration as we talk about it, um, to be thinking in terms if you have a, a particular um, interest or investment, I think that they should have um, a person who is really owning it from the planning board perspective as far as um, interfacing and, uh, and uh, working the particular challenge, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that could be um, what we do on Thursday as far as the reorg, maybe. So uh, it could be. But we did just set like it. Uh, so it's up, up to the planning board what they want to do, right? We did sort of um, establish that it would be about an hour. Um, and I don't know how people feel about just grinding in on the uh, specifics of the growth study effort. Um, but as far as just picking people who could be the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could, if, yeah, we could definitely. Yes. And that, that would be part of the, it, I envision it being part of the uh, structuring discussion, right? Yeah. Okay. Can we do the Hayden Woods or? Uh, uh, I don't know if we can do the time. The, de the Hayden Woods scaven port. Discussion. So, uh, just as background of Hayden Woods, they're looking to have the remaining $25,000 bond released. Um, we got a memo from, and Phil, maybe you can talk to us a little bit more. We got a memo from Matt Crowley, Crowley, Crowley at Beta, who has confirmed that everything has been met that the planning board was looking for in the last memo. The only issue is he did call out that we haven't gotten any photographs showing that the fence around the retention basin was installed and the vegetation mm -hmm. uh, in that area has come back. So I spoke to Joe Mark Marquardt today, and he was reaching out to the applicant to see if they can get the photographs. They're going to try and bring them to the, the hearing tonight. I don't know 
Oh, do you have them? I do have them. Perfect. Okay. Come on so up. I think that's the only thing that's we missing. Don't. I don't sure. They're satisfactory to the board. We have the memo from Beta and these photographs, and that should be. No, I think they're all the same. It's just, yeah. Maybe just take a look at them and pass them down. That's a full retention. <laughs> it is a full bond. <laughs> fencing goes all the way around. Yeah, the fencing goes all the all way around. around. It does, yes. Yeah. Bill, did you see the pictures? As I did not. Okay. There's some pictures up there. This is some of the, sorry. I can get you a copy as well. He's, John has a whole bunch of The whole pack is coming around. But you also, John, you received the mountain mail as well, right? I did not. This okay. is the first one. So you'll need to scan them, I guess. Kind of more of the same, but I think yeah, maybe yeah. some different shots, yeah, different angles. Is it seeded? Yeah, it's seeded. Time to seed it, yes. I mean, unfortunately, the weather has not been. Issues that you can. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'd like to see a little more grass growth, but I, you know, I don't know. Um, any um, questions from board members? So just back to Phil's comments. So does that yeah. does that satisfy you, or or no? Because um, I'm going to vote. I'm going to base my vote on what you say. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Well, I think I think grass will grow. But I, I'm just curious as to when it was. So can the applicant tell us when that was hydroceded? It was um, hydroceded in the fall um, when the work was done, and it was seeded again. I think uh, mid-April. Hmm. We're happy to reseed it again. And that's well, where, where were again. the photos taken? Uh, today. Today. Yeah. I think the, the real issue for us is the weather has not been really warm. Um, Especially during the evenings, that's that's been an issue according to our landscaper. Any other questions or concerns? And everything else has been satisfied. Yeah, all the requirements yeah, and requests. Memo from Beta saying everything else that was in the previous memo has been addressed. No good. So I guess I don't have any problem with um, with 
entertain a motion to release the rest of the bond as long as you are willing to reseed if it is Absolutely. necessary. Absolutely. We have an excellent relationship with the current management and condo owners association, so we'll, we'll happen to okay. work with so, that. So um, I don't know if, um, John, if it's possible to just sort of put it on your, um, your agenda to check it in a month when the weather hopefully turns to warmer Sunshine. climbs. <laughs> Um, and just make sure that it looks like it's coming in. Uh, I'm happy to do that. The question is when would you seed? Because is a month enough to let enough grass come up for it to be noticeable? I would think so. And maybe that's a question for, you think that a month is enough? Yeah, yeah I, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Right. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, and then, Thank you. And then he'll just communicate if it, you know, with you if there's some reason that we Not need an to receive. Not an issue. Just a point of clarification, maybe for Kobe, and I might have missed it, but just name and address. For oh, sure. I'm record. sorry. Uh, John Parsons with Davenport Village. Thank sorry. you. Sorry. All right. I'll entertain a motion to release that bond. <coughs> so moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So you should be all set. Thank you very much. Yep. Have a good night. Okay. Did the pictures stay? Say it again. Do you have the pictures? Just checking. Yep. <laughs> um, any other future agenda items in the next two minutes? Well, regarding the master plan implementation items, yeah. should we start with uh, some of the items we were to do by other committees, like conservation or selectmen? Yeah. Should we ask? Should we ask the town planner to send an email to those committees to see if they to give us an update on what they've done? Yeah. This page a, was our page. Yeah, I know. It's a pretty extensive list, isn't it? It is. So you think we should look through it first? I think we should. I'm just feeling like we should look through it first, and then um, and then uh, do some of that work to sort of parcel it out and see. Um, but yes, I definitely think that other uh, boards and committees need to be reached out to to find out. Okay. So, Muriel, yeah. I, would, uh, I was thinking that for the uh, downtown project. Yeah, the quarter? Yeah, not to bring those guys in, but just for us to have a, a small discussion about that, about the strategy of that. Um, I, don't, I, I don't mind putting it on the agenda. I'm not sure what role we have. Can we make suggestions to them, or? So I think they're at seventy-five percent design. I know they're going to come present to a historic district commission again. Yeah. Now that they're at seventy-five percent, so I don't know if maybe they might present to us also. Yeah, that's. I okay. you know if there's a place where we can take our thoughts, then I'm fine. Yeah, I'm totally. Yeah. Fine. Are they going to have one more public hearing, or are they done? Do you know? But there's a project portal on the website. Why don't I check? Oh, <laughs> look at her go! Thank you, Amy. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. And, okay. And yeah. maybe like the tenth is a good time to do it because yeah. we're kicking off that the next year. I'm going to entertain a motion while Amy's looking for that to open the uh, public hearing for the Whisper Way. Um, it's an amendment to the special permit concept plan, and it's also a continued public hearing for the definitive subdivision plan for Whisper Way. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Folks at home cannot hear you. They'll be desperately curious about what's going on. Hi, Ron Nation, proponent of Whisperway. I'm not sure if it works to open the uh, the definitive hearing. Um, I don't think it's open yet. Uh, so the subdivision is a continuation. So that it is open. okay. The special permit is a new hearing. Oh, okay. I got it backwards. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I open both. All right, and just give us two minutes. You can get set up and whatever. I'll be right back. 
did we find out? I don't see any other upcoming dates mm -hmm. besides the groundbreaking. So wow. When's the groundbreaking? May 1st, 2020. May 1st, 2020. It's a lot of easement work between now and May 1st, yes, 2020, I'm just saying. <laughs> but people can subscribe to email updates, apparently. So Nice. Yeah. Um, so I'm fine having a conversation about it. Um, oh. let, me, um, let me take a look at the website. Oh, okay. first, Perfect. Um, <laughs> we should just put it on the agenda in case. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so then we don't waste that time. All right. Uh, I'll just email the link to everyone. Maybe at that point we can Thanks figure out if we want them to come in or not. Um, I don't think we're going to have anybody in. Okay. Right? Not at all. Let's have a conversation about it first. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. So um, welcome. Yes. Sorry, just going back to that. Yeah. If, if, um, if there's anything appropriate to include in the packet, I think that'll just help encourage all of us to review what's in the existing plans beforehand, or maybe we just all agree to do it. But I think we all be better served. I mean, that's a, a big deal for the town, and yeah, it's a huge. It, it's it's worth all of us as planning board members to review the content information before we have the discussion. Yeah, I agree. So we'll look to John for that. Whatever you can get your hands on. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All righty. Do you want to introduce? Um, do you want to introduce the amendment special permit to the con the special to, to the special permit concept? Sure. Uh, Ron Nation and uh, Dan Hazen from Gary and Hallon. And um, so last time we were here, I think it was. Well, can we get this on the, on, do we want to get it on the screen? Yeah, I would love to get it on the screen. Is that the open space plan rendering? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lovely Carol Merrill. Carol Merrill. Mm -hmm. See, I'm dating, we're dating. Oh, yeah, we emailed it, so. Okay. Good. So, um, when we first brought this in, um, we had the, all the changes we've made since we first brought it in are, are pretty minor. Um, the layout's basic, generally the same. We, uh, uh, we just scienced it up. We ended up with, an, I think, a, an additional common drive from the, from the last plan. Um, we carved out enough, uh, we carved out enough land for the, for possible septic systems to be um, in one in one spot on the bottom of the plan there, the bright area. Um, we're not sure if we're going to need them or not. We may need it just for a few systems. Um, we comply, we have all the open space complies with the rules and regs. Um, long driveways were brought up at the last hearing. We have two driveways that are in the 600 foot range. Um, and the fire chief, I went over, we went over that with the fire chief. Fire chief suggests that we put uh, sprinklers in those houses, and uh, I've agreed to that. And um, they also have a, a turnaround, a, a, a widening section. It's about halfway down. You can barely see it um, on that those, that long driveway. Yeah. But it just uh, it's that's in the bylaw. A turnaround. Um, it's a it's a widening so. So uh, vehicles can cross, can pass. If it's over 500 feet, they want that. Okay. So. I'm sorry. How wide are the driveways? Uh, there'll be a minimum of 12 feet paved, and there'll be two feet, a two-foot shoulder, a flat shoulder, either side of the driveway. Um, <coughs> the fire chief um, only ha was only concerned with those two driveways, um, and he was. And he thinks that the concern um, is is hugely diminished by putting uh, sprinkler systems in the houses. We have a memo to that effect as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it would just be those two houses at the end, or any of the houses on the long driveways. Um, so there's like three houses at the end of long driveways, right? Uh, yeah. One. One. Well, sure. all the others are under 500 feet. I think that one, I guess it's lot two. 
I can't point up there. Okay. So there's a common drive that serves lot three and four. Yeah. And then there's a common drive, the longest one, that serves lot one and five. Those are right. the ones right. really right. far away. Yep. And a common drive that serves lot six and seven. Okay, and the right. two houses that are going to be sprinkled are one and five? Yes. How long is the, the next longest driveway? Down to lot three, yeah. Three and feet? About just over 400 feet for, uh, for three and uh, four for these two. And the rest are... Uh, this one here is 200 to here. And the rest are, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty typical. Right. Lot nine is an existing house. Yes. I'm sorry, through the chair. Yeah. Um, and I just see an outline of what I believe is the existing driveway, right? Yes. It's just. So what is the new driveway? <laughs> I don't see it. It's under the trees? <laughs> uh, it is kind of under the trees, but it is there. Oh, OK. Um, Dan is showing it. Right. It's, it's, we're going to pull it right off of uh, right around Station 800. OK. We'll possibly move it up, depending on the grades right here. And then that would be also a common drive for lot 10 and 9? Yes. OK. So one, two, three, four, five common drives. Where is that in our? Um, it's a separate attachment that came today. Yeah, it's a. This came today. This this particular the, the picture. Green version, the the green version. version. Right. So it's not in our. So, so you, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, how will the um, work with split the, the sharing of driveways as far as who's responsible for maintaining them? Uh, well, we'll have language in the, in the deeds, and they'll certainly be sold with the intention, you know, with the understanding that the common drives and that it's a shared expense between the two homeowners. And, um, Makes sense. But I just wanted to ask the question. Yeah. Um, chair. Yeah. Go ahead, Gary. Um, two questions. The first one's actually for for John, um, and I, I know that our bylaws have limits on the length of a cul-de-sac or dead-end street. I know we have limits on the number of houses. Um, and then I also know that we generally not crazy about shared driveways, but you know we do permit them, I think, when it's a maximum of two houses. Is that correct? Yes. But I guess I'm curious, do we have any, do we have any constraints on the number of shared driveways we can have off of a dead-end street or cul-de-sac? Not really restricted by the number of houses. Right. Okay. Total number of houses. Not the number. Yeah. You can have two houses per common driveway. Yes. But not. There's no limit on the number of common, common driveways that you could have. Off of a street. Off of one street. In the open space development. Correct. District. Uh, there is a limit on the number of houses we can have off of a cul-de-sac, which this is. Yes. Correct. Which is. Ten. 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 And there's nine? Ten. ten. There's ten, ten here. Ten. One, uh, well, there's two existing, but yeah, ten. Ten total. Okay, so the number of driveways doesn't matter. It's just the total number of houses. Correct. Okay. And then second question, um, with the long driveways, I'm just curious what you're doing to allow for people to turn around in those driveways. And it just this is just from my personal experience of have, knowing people with long driveways is that well, they have yeah. people over, they pull in, and then everybody backs up, and right, no. sometimes there's not well, enough room to turn around. Yeah, no, I think there'll be line of sight but um, for, for the long driveways. But in the bylaw, they want to turn around. I forget, it's, uh, I forget its dimensions, but the driveway widens out uh, for a distance. I think it's 24 feet or 30 feet, something like that, and it gets wide enough for two cars to pass. And they, in a, any driveway over 500 feet has to have that. So we've got that in, in this driveway here. Yeah. And it, it's just a little turnout, you know, no different than going down any, some of the narrow roads in town. That yeah, no, I, 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 guess, I guess I'm referring more to the driveway at the garage so that there's sufficient room, even if there's cars parked there, that there's some ability to turn the, around because... Yeah, actually, there's, the fire department has, a, there's a, in the, in the bylaw, there's a, there's a requirement for a turnaround down 
at the at the end of the driveway for a fire truck. So we have to we have to make that work as well. Okay. And there's a slope uh, requirement as well that we have to make work. And I'm not sure in what process that all gets uh, flushed out, but I mean, we'll, we're just going to make it work. And we can make it work. Okay. That was going to be yeah, my question, ahead. Madam Chair. Uh, on those long driveways, is there a significant slope change, either up or down? Because the topography of land lends itself to a lot of uh, changes in slopes. So I was just curious in terms of are we going up, are we going down, are we going. Yeah, there are some. Are, yeah, there there are definitely some some decent grade changes, but um, we have a ten percent uh, slope to work with. So the lead within ten percent, less than or equal to ten percent. Yeah, there will be some driveways with uh, with the maximum slope for for a pier for a section of it, but. Um, you know, it will 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 be within the regulations. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to just um, make sure we start at the beginning um, and just ask um, the principal planner to um, give any overview or additional comments. You give a very detailed um, memo, which I appreciate. <clears throat> so this is a two-part hearing, uh, yep. a special permit, and a subdivision plan. The subdivision plan should really come after the special permit because the special permit allows for the subdivision plan to happen. Uh, so in terms of process, that's how it should go. Special permit first, subdivision plan next. Um, they had originally been approved for a 24 lot subdivision. The subdivision itself was not a cul-de-sac. It was a loop road that had two access points to Wood Street. Uh, so the, one of the big changes is now it's a cul-de-sac, obviously. Uh, 10 lots, seven of, seven of them, seven houses, I should say, are new. Uh, three houses are being raised and redeveloped, I believe, or just redeveloped in general. So 10 total lots, seven net new lots. Um, and I believe, aside from all the details, those are, that's kind of the big picture change in the development. Okay, and um, is everybody eligible to vote? This is, this is a brand new hearing, so everybody's eligible to vote who's yes, here right everyone's now. Everyone's eligible to vote on the special permit. Right. Um, Everyone but Frank Darrow is allowed to vote on the subdivision plan. Okay. Okay. Um, then um, we'll go to Beta's review. So um, this, is, uh, as was mentioned, this is a two-step process. And now with the comments that I was, it's really a three-step process for the, for the borough board to consider. So um, the first, the first thing is to make sure that the, as 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 you know, when we did the first one, was to make sure that there was the number of lots to determine what what, what was the number of lots, and there's a, there's a clear some guidance provided in your in your bylaw. And the one of the first, the first thing is you, you do a, a conventional uh, subdivision. You know, you try to you draw it, make sure it has all the right frontage, all the lots are all the lots um, are the right size for that for that zoning area and, and whatnot. So, <clears throat> so that was done for the first, and that and you and if you recall that it, it had a loop road uh -huh. um, that that ended up so. Um, so there was a number of complications because of the vernal pool and construction cost issues and whatever. So they've come back with this new subdivision plan. Um, the challenge that I have with with what was they they just assumed that the 22 lots um, were still in play, um, and yet their the lot area doesn't cover the same a same area. Mm -hmm. So the they, they're using a smaller area. They're taking off a chunk to the what is that? The east. Yeah, east. The east. And if if you look at there, the the sub the, the new subdivision road, mm -hmm. this this whole um, left side is um, is not is not included in the in the uh, open space plan. Mm -hmm. So you can't really compare those two. 
uh, and but the road goes out out of it would would eventually it would essentially go out of the subdivision, and then to um, I, Dan and I have had some discussions about is this still viable, considering you know the vernal pool issue and whether it's constructible or not, and therefore is can you actually get that many lots? Mm -hmm. um, and so Dan was Dan mentioned that the, the construction cost was the issue relative to permitting, and uh, we weren't able to verify that. But, <clears throat> but anyway, I think that's where you gotta start is figure out, is this, now this, the second guidance is, a, is an equation in which um, uh, they provided the, the equation relative to the, to the new lot, and, and that provides for, I don't know, like 20 lots? I think so. 19 lots so it, and, and clearly obviously uh, an open space subdivision is more advantageous than mm -hmm. uh, you know a full subdivision so but I think I think starting that at that place and making sure that we get all our, our ducks in a row here first um, and then you know we went on and, and did some review of the subdivision itself and there are now we're working through some of the most of the comments um, we got a submission today uh, we weren't able to get through everything uh, but there are a number of things that just will have to be worked out right uh, and then finally uh, just the design and the, and the layout of, of the of the uh, common drivers themselves will have to be there's a number of issues associated with those so and there'll be a whole section of permitting that once we have the lots laid out then we will go through and we'll right. finalize the common driveways it just at this stage in the game it just didn't make sense to finalize those without knowing if we had you know, move forward yeah so madam chair just a question on clarity sure so what was the lot the acreage before versus the acreage now you're saying they removed a bunch of acreage What's between the, the two plans like 34 now I think it used to be up in the 45 50. So they've gone from about 45 to mid 30s, roughly. So clearly, there's a there's a plan to subdivide the 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 parcel that they're not including in this. I would assume, right? Uh, so. And I'm just trying to follow the math. And it used to be 22 lots, and now it's 10. 10. Is that because that yeah. seems like the ratio has cut down proportionally? I'm just trying to understand what you were saying. You know. Well, the, the 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 issue is is if you can't do two and two connections to the street then you're limited to a 500 foot dead end street for your subdivision which I think it's 1,000 though with the open space right for open space yeah. but not the subdivision right 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 so you got to do a conventional subdivision right. that requires no waivers or whatever right so, right good point so that so that that's the challenge now obviously yeah. this is a, a, a better plan than the, the, the 22 lots or the you know mm -hmm. whatever so so but I, I think that's and, and, and John pointed out correctly that it's 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 a guidance. You know, the conventional plan is is, is a guidance, not necessarily you know all fast. Yeah, but it is, it is conventionally a fixed por part of our process, right? That has to happen for to set the maximum number of buildable lots. It's not in my reading of the bylaws that it's not a set number. That it's, you're supposed to use the conventional subdivision and the formula to determine the number of lots in general, not, I don't believe there was a shall in there. You know, the, the, the maximum number of lots shall be what was the Yeah, 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 I, I know, everything. I gotcha. Um, but yes, general practice is usually the maximum number of lots is what's shown on a conventional. Okay. Right, there's three criteria yep. in there that, uh, you know, the conventional, the second one's information provided by the applicant indicating development potential of the land, and then the third one was the equation that Phil had mentioned, you know, yeah. using the open space, the yeah. area, the wetlands, that zoning districts. Mm -hmm. So there's three that it says to be used as guidelines. Yeah, yeah. And I think that we've always used the, the, the all three of them. Carol, did you have a question? I guess I have two questions. First, I, I do like this plan much better, but if the first criteria is showing that it's, that it, the property is doable as a conventional plan, and you're taking out a portion of the land, is it still viable as a conventional subdivision? And 
what's going to happen to the land that you took out and why did you take it out? If it was originally considered in the proposal for the subdivision to establish all the standards, then you're now taking out a huge chunk of land. So can you explain <coughs> why? Uh, yeah. So you have to do it up here, Ron, because people at home can't hear you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, so we, d we did submit a plan with the, with the through road for the, for the new conventional plan, um, which is floating around here somewhere. It does comply with all of the rules and regs, the open space ratio to the, uh, to the wetlands and to the, to the entire tract itself. Right. Um, now with the 500 foot, sorry, 500 foot that's road. That end. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a thousand foot. No, it's a, um, it's, it it's 10 lots in a conventional subdivision and it's all within the land that we have, that we have uh, designed the open space plan on. Sorry, through the chair. So, so is it, is it a cul-de-sac though? No, it's a through road. Oh, a through road, okay. Thru, the conventional yeah. layout has to be a through road. Okay. As Phil mentioned, it's okay. got to either be, I don't even think it can be 500 feet conventional. I think that's, that's a whole, well, maybe it can, but I think We don't need to go there, yeah. So, so that was the original plan you presented us, so the U? Yes. That's not, this is a new original, this is a new right. conventional plan, right? But in the subject property. Just because I'm particularly confused, I guess. Yeah. That, that plan right there that shows that you can develop this land with this many lots has an in and an out, and it's going over property that you're now excluding? The, the, the land for the, for the actual end of the roadway, yes. The last 600 feet of roadway. So I guess my question is, how is it still doable as a conventional plan if you've taken that property out. If you uh, take that property out, you can't have an in and out anymore, or can you? We don't want an in and out. We just wanted to do the cul-de-sac. Okay, and, so you're, but, you're, but you still have the open space. You still have the same land area that's in, that's in this plan with the, with the in and out road. Okay, so my second question from before is you've carved out now 12 for 15 acres from that plan to this one? Correct. Yep. Off this side. Okay, so what's happening with that 12 to 15 acres? Uh, there's going to be two a &R lots, as we discussed way back when. And the lots are, uh, there'll be seven or eight acres each. With a real long driveway? Yep. I so I think that our process has always been that you have to use the acreage you're going to use and show the conventional plan and get your calculation of the available units from that. And I don't know that I would support deviating from our conventional strategy that we use all the time um, because I think that we are, we are at least confusing planning board members um, by comparing two different total land masses and I don't think that that's part of the typical process well, with the exception of the road the roadway itself making the second entrance for a long road just showing that you can make a 10 lot subdivision in the land area that we're using for the open space plan that can be done um, if if the road connected out through a 500 acre parcel and that, and that's what made a, a thousand foot cul-de-sac work. Would we then just include the other 500 acres or 100 acres or whatever it was? I mean, I, I don't know. I, we, we did look for this in the in the rules and regs, and we couldn't find anything specific to it. But I don't know. Phil, yeah. So um, I would make a suggestion that the the they use this as, as their plan, but then they update the open space plan to include the two additional lots, the A&R lots. I don't know if that's possible. Um, that way it would... Is there a reason it wouldn't be possible? Well, I think the buffer zone issue maybe. I don't know 
Well, and then and and you. You did you did that at you did that at uh, your other one, your hunters. You took two lots off. Right in advance. In advance. Okay. I'm not sure I'd be comfortable putting A and R lots in right. the plan. Something outside our control. It. And we talked about doing that with this, but we're in we're into the process. So. Um. So just an opinion, if I may. Hold on one second. Sure. Dave, yeah. Sure. Yeah. We can. I suppose we could leave the leave the layout for this fictitious road there. Um, As a paper street. The paper street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then. <coughs> um, so it, it, I may be. Uh, let me let me let Dave make his comment. First. I, I was just going to say that. Personally, I like the approach of the road and two entrances, and it seems now that kind of jury-rigging things to get a cul-de-sac that we really kind of frown upon as a town, in addition to some A&R lots, it, it just doesn't sound kosher to me. That's just an opinion, though. Yeah, I, I, so, good chair. Um, I tend to agree with David. I mean, just with that 600 feet to kind of get this new conventional plan in, it just kind of goes outside of what we've done in the past. So if there's some way, and maybe it's Phil's comment or something, to be able to kind of realign so that it becomes, so everything's kind of included in this new conventional plan, you don't have to kind of, and I'm sure there's a reason why, right? Otherwise it would be too simple, this is straightforward to do. To be able to have that included. The other question I had, and it's it's probably it's not necessarily germane here, but is is Comcom? Do they need to kind of see this again, or they already seen it and blessed everything with the with yeah, the new yeah. changes? Yeah, they've seen it again, and uh, and we've talked about the Common Drive as I talked about the planning board with the Common Drive when we when I first floated this plan, and that they were very much happier with the Common Drive out to those two lots, those two A and R lots, than a full blown road. Um, the two A and R lots again are outside of the plan that is in front of the us, conventional plan. right? Right. That's, right. Yep. So, in all fairness to everybody, that yeah, I'm probably violently agreeing, and I'll let Mary go after me. Um, we just we just need to have a predictable process, not only for the board but also for the public. And I get that mm -hmm. it's they, that um, you're working with a challenging site, and it's probably going to be a beautiful little development, and conceptually we embrace that. Um, but the process has to be something, you know, apples to apples and predictable. Mary? Um, my comment was um, in response a little bit to David, um, that I believe that the intent and certainly the, um, the result is that uh, with the cul-de-sac instead of a full road, um, this development will impinge on less of the wetlands mm -hmm. and so you know that was something that the developer just mentioned but um but i think that that's um that really can balance the issue of the you know we don't love cul-de-sacs kind of thing can, <laughs> so. can you repeat that i'm sorry number. i didn't hear that last time it's going to be less of a what it, it doesn't impinge on wetlands as oh, much right so and i think that balances the cul-de-sac issue so many fewer homes too. too. That's true. Does it balance the double driveway issue as well? Sorry, through the chair. <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. Amy's going yep. right now. Oh, no, I was just going to say it's far fewer homes, so less impact on. The, you know, I think there's more open space. Correct. It's not more it's open, not open space, space because they're changing the they're changing the space that we're looking at, okay. and then the other space that is is not here anymore is going to be proposed to be those two A and R lots. And is there any change on the affordable housing since it's smaller? It's, it's yes. Just, there would be none. One yeah. instead of? What's that? No. There will be none. none. No. There wouldn't be any required. And just for the public's uh, information, it's, it is it is going to be 10 lots, but not 10 new ones, which is why it doesn't trigger the uh, affordable housing requirement. Yeah, there, are, there, are, there are 10 lots proposed in the open space subdivision. There are three. There are three existing lots. Mm -hmm. One of the houses is going to be raised, and, uh, and possibly two of them will be raised. But one is definitely staying. An existing house. That's when you come in the drive. That's the the first one that's existing is on the left there, the yes. shadow of an outline, and then the other ones 
in the back, but that one's staying. And so, and then the second one on the left is is as well. Um, the the second one on the left is 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 going to be raised. Lot two. No, lot two is going to stay. Okay. There's an existing house on underneath lot four. Okay. Thank you. That's going to be that's going to be torn down. And okay. Okay. Um, do you mind, uh, so we've talked a little bit about the fact that we don't have the first step of the process that we typically have, which is the conventional plan on the piece of property you're going to build on for the open space plan. And, and I think we're all agreed that we need that. Um, will you walk us through just the list of waivers that you need for this project so that we have that um, as part of the the thinking up front. Uh, the first waiver is the request for um, yeah. the cross sections of the road. Um, now that it's a thousand feet, I could actually remove that if just to reduce the limit of uh, the number of waivers. Second one is trees to be retained within the right of way um, due to the narrow width. The, it's going to be almost impossible to re retain any trees within the, the right of way that's there. Yeah. Um, we do have a tree planting plan. We are proposing street trees. <coughs> um, as far as tree cutting on the site, it's going to be as minimal as possible. So I mean, that's kind of the whole idea behind the open space is to preserve as much vegeta vegetation as possible. Uh, the third one is location of proposed streetlights. Looking for a waiver on the streetlights, I believe that's a standard yep. town wide one. Um, disturbance to natural topography. Depths of fill will be over uh, eight feet due to the wetlands at the initial entrance coming in off of um, Wood Street at the uh -huh. existing Whisper Way. Yep. Um, now under under the subdivision, I was I had added and emailed late um, today. Yes. Yep. Um, Which I haven't even seen, but go ahead right. and just outline yeah, it. Yeah, just verbally. Um, road slopes, um, section eight point two point six point A. Um, it's the maximum side slopes allowed by the subdivision is three to one. In the existing Whisper Way entrance, to be able to enter and to be able to go at a, the maximum slope and without grading onto the town forest there's a section I'd have to go at a two to one slope along the edge. Um, two to one slopes are able to be stabilized and you know, without erosion and it's still uh, not a retaining wall along the right away but a, a two to one slope rather than a three to one. Okay. Um, and the other one was for the side slopes of the detention ponds are required to be three to one. Due to the, the um, footprint that we have to work with for vernal pool buffers, um, the existing lot two, and then the roadway, I was we were requesting a two to one waiver. Um, maintaining the same berm width of 10 feet and installing a impervious barrier within the berm to prevent any seepage that would go through. Uh, the pond itself is only three feet deep. It's not a very deep pond. It's a very minimal. Uh, so that was, those were the two that were added, two to one slopes for the roadway and two to one slopes for the detention pond. So there's two more coming? Yes. Okay. Um, the zoning bylaw was a buffer of a minimum of 100 feet. There's one section, one small section, um, between the town forest and the corner of basically lot 10 at the end of the cul-de-sac where the lot line comes down and takes a hard right and bends in. Um, if you see it, it's a little notch that sits right up in the center at the northern section between lot 10 and the open space. 
That's only 77 feet. We're able to maintain the 100 feet everywhere else around the subdivision, the open space subdivision. So it's just that one small little sliver um, where we're working with uh, tight frontages. It's okay. So, and the last one? <laughs> the lot frontage depth? Yep. Um, due to the steep slopes and the wetlands, we were going to use common driveways. The lot frontage depth is a, basically a, a square or rectangle that would need to be, it parallels the lot frontage and goes back for a certain depth to form a rectangle in that area. Okay. Um, I don't, know that I've, I don't know that I've ever seen this in front of the board, so I, an explanation is really helpful to me. It, it's, uh, I believe, 60. It's 210.111 uh, yeah. A, the lot front yep. frontage depth requirement contained in this chapter. 210, <coughs> Article 1, 210 dash 4, definitions. Definition of lot frontage may be weighed by the planning board in order to achieve the purpose of this article. So the what they want you to do with this box thing is, is there's a definition for that back in mm -hmm. the 204 thing. And they want you to put a box at the front of the lot. And um, it, I think for three of the lots here, it, uh, it, makes, it, it stretches the lot out and it makes the driveway longer. And um, we're trying to preserve a few septic systems and it also interferes with, with that objective. So, um, okay, so I, it will be helpful to identify which ones those are for sure, as Bay's comment. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Nation, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the idea of that is to prevent some kind of, it, it, it's to try and discourage some type of bottlenecking where you, mm -hmm. where you, you, you get the frontage and then it narrows down to some point. So they're, they're trying yeah. to keep the lots as whole yeah. as they can. And that's, I mean, if you look at the lot plan, there's, a couple of lots that have that, that I th I'm assuming they, they meet the frontage requirement, so they yes. have the frontage there, yeah. and then they narrow down. Right. And um, they and they can meet the the, the formula. We can re recon, uh, reconfigure those lot lines to make the box fit in the front of in the front of the lots, but it just creates problems other places. But I mean, we can do that, and I don't I don't I don't think it's going to change the bottlenecking at all on these lots because they're they're going to be a common driveway that you know runs down. Four or five hundred feet. So it's an effective. But, but we can definitely. Can do I that. piggyback on yeah. the comment, yeah. Mr. Nation? You yep. talked about it creates some issues or challenges elsewhere. What What are those other challenges? If you create, if you put the box there, what do this and what happens? It it just uh, it just fattens things out. It it shifts things around and it it just drags the it just drags the houses down further away from the road. Okay. Essentially, on this up on an open space subdivision like this, it's creating area in the front of the lots that's not going to be used for anything. It, it, right. It's, it's really a, if the lots were only 100 feet deep and there were standard rectangular lots on a subdivision, like a standard yeah. checkerboard subdivision, yes, that would it would make sense, especially when you get into some of the cul-de-sacs where you get the pie shapes and things like that. But on a subdivision like this. We, we could take those boxes and we can put them in the usable area around each of the houses, but the, the front, the area up near the road is just, it, it's, it. it's dead area. I get it. So um, one of the, the next thing that we're going to do, well, one of the things we're going to do is add to the um, outline. And so a detailed discussion and a decision on each of those waivers is, is now part of our, our typical outline, so we're going to need to add that. I think I'm, I don't think it's here. Um, uh, do we have any comments from other town departments? I don't remember in particular new comments. Did anybody see them in the packet? I don't remember seeing um, new comments to this. There was a letter from the fire, <coughs> fire, fire chief. chief yes. Mr. Nation yep. said. Representative, yep. Okay. Um, okay. So on our conventional um, outline for these hearings, the next thing is to add um, any any 
items to the outline, either the planning board members first and then the public. I don't know if there's any public here to comment on this, but we'll start with planning board members. Are there any other additions to the outline? Okay, how about, yeah, is there anybody from the public who's here to talk about this particular? Okay, all right. So just, um, then just the detailed discussion on the waivers. Um, does anybody feel like we need to schedule another site walk? I was just gonna think about that, right? It's, it's been over, maybe over. Probably two years. Yeah, it's Is probably it really about right. Well, no, because no, I've been on a site walk. I've been on two site walks. Yep. Okay, so <laughs> at least a year. <laughs> No, less than a year. And I, I couldn't make one, so it's... Yeah, I couldn't it's make one, too, summer. so I missed it. I'm yep. Losing my mind, but... <coughs> the trees are taller. <laughs> the leaves are deeper. There's more ticks. <laughs> Is the car it's still not as cold? The, the car's still there. The car's still there. Yep. The car's still there. Um, it, it probably makes sense. So I think that, you know, we will have two new members of the planning board um after the election so it makes sense to to make it possible for them to come out and trot around potentially um uh, but we can um as long as you're comfortable making that available to them if sure. they want to do that that would be great yep. so so on the on the uh the bait and switch um, um thing here with the 24 lots and the going down to 10 lots or slash 12 lots with the two A&R lots. Um, the, 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 the 10 lot proof plan for the conventional does have a road that runs out through the, the land that, wasn't, that was on the original plan. Mm -hmm. I, but I, I, don't, I, don't follow the, I don't follow the logic chain to, uh, to include all of that land the land that was on that was 24 lots and now it's going to be 10 or 12 um, I, I mean I get the road part and, and you know maybe we could leave it leave it as a paper street or, 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 or calculate the area of the road and add it to the open space in the 10 lot I don't know the, it just seems like there would be a way to make this happen um, and maybe I'm focusing on it, and I shouldn't be, but um, I. Carol, my problem with it is the first rule is that you have to show you can you can develop this property as a conventional property, conventional right. plan, and you can do that with that acreage in there. Because you've right. got your road coming all the way down. Correct. Once you take that acreage out, I'm not sure you can develop the property as a conventional plan any longer. Right, but. But we wouldn't take the acreage out. We would just just leave the acreage in for the road. So, so if I can ask the question a little different way, on that 31 acres that you're including in this, how many houses can you develop on those 31 acres in a conventional plan? Because you haven't 24, showed us that. 24, we had 24. Not in the 31 acres. That's the full acreage oh. moving around. No, on 31, we have 10. Yeah, that's. But you can't get out. Well, yeah, we can. We, yeah. We've drawn. We, we, it's expensive, yeah. but we could. We've drawn a road through there, the same as every other con any other yield plan. It just okay. So you, but you're going to and sorry not to be. No, I'm just I, trying to make it clear for me. You can yeah. you can develop this property as a conventional plan, getting in and out. But then you've taken the road section out to develop in another manner. That's that's where I'm having. I understand that you don't want to build the round. I don't want you to. I like it better with just one road. It's, it's a lot less um, impactful to mm -hmm. do it that way. But the, the rules specifically state you have to be able to show that you can do it in order not to do it. The only reason we didn't do it originally was because of a stormwater basin that was within 100 feet of a barrel pool. What we could have done is come off of Wood Street at a tendable 10% slope up for about a grade change of about 20 feet with retaining walls on both sides and then run it back down to the other side. It's We're buildable, but in this economics, you know, as far as lot cost goes, it would. 
wasn't right. so, at that time. So we don't want you to build it, right? We all feel right. the same way. But if you have to have that property to um, to be able to build the lots you want to build in, in the equation, then you have to have that property. You can't use it in two different ways. We, right? we don't need that property. We just need that section where the road is. Because right. we exactly. all, of the, all of the rules. I think, I think that's fine with all the rules and regs. So I think that's, let's it, just make pretend we can leave the road there. Okay. And everything works. Then you have to but leave you don't get the acreage. acreage for the road in the plan. Right. You can't right. take it out and use it elsewhere. Right. Well, so that's at that, that point, then it just makes sense to build a conventional. Well, well that's this. I mean, that's what I make. That's what my notes are saying. It's like <laughs> because at that point, I'm going to leave here with 24 lots instead of 10. Well, I mean, it's you're creating a right away for ten lots. Plus, you can still get the two that would have been A and R. Right. It it just yeah. Instead of taking that land and using that acreage for the open space in this, it's possible to leave the actual strip of road road there and. Is the drop off so deep in between the A and R and the and the plan and the ten development plan that you have that you can't loop it through what you, was your the A and R driveways? It would just essentially the road would come through here at the strip of land mm -hmm. and run out and it would remain there. And then when the open space came, you would still have this strip that goes out and through. Is that is I'm just having a hard time following. Is that I, I think the basic problem is if we allow you to use land to to go through the process and come up with your buildable land your lots mm -hmm. and to say this is the property or the size of the development will allow on this site and then allow you to take acreage out and use it in a different manner. I think we're setting ourselves up for for a huge precedent that you know the next guy comes along with a hundred acres and he wants to use the same five acre space to access two different things and you've done this so how do we say no to the next guy that wants to use the land twice could the yield plan if we're letting you do it I'm sorry could the yield plan show 12 including the two ANRs or the from my perspective he they just need to show a piece of property that has an in and an out to, de to determine how many lots you can put on it and whatever property you need to use to show that needs to stay in your plan. I agree. Yeah. I agree as well. Stay yeah. right away it has to remain. Uh, yeah, you can't so. take it out and use it somewhere else for a okay. different purpose. Well, we, we can probably work around that. I can do that. I think that can, can work. Okay, perfect. We'll be using it for access for two A and R lots, though. Then, then you've got 12 lots yeah. total on that parcel of land. Right. Well, but the other lots would be A and R lots. But then, so then, but so then you get into well, can you mandate that that it's going to be an open space plan with the open with the open space? I don't know. Sounds like so. That. I, I think that we are all engaged in the conversation and would like to find a way to um, to support a, a better you know, open space development in there than the conventional. Um, I'm just not sure that we see it yet, but if there, yeah. you know, I, I would, I would utilize the expertise in our land use department um, and, and, and just, you know, and fill and find the way that works for what you hope to actually build there, including the two houses that you're the a &R. putting on. Uh, planning to put through as an A and R. I mean, I think I, I think the planning board, you know, is philosophically supportive of this nicer open space, mm -hmm. less land consumptive, wetland infringing less plan, dense. Yeah. <laughs> and less dense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. But we do. Ha I, I think that it's it's an excellent point that we do have to see it in a way that we don't make some um, ridiculous leap of precedent that hurts us in other ways. Understood. Um, 
All right, we talked about the, the CONCOM. Where are you in that process? Uh, we have a public hearing uh, uh, coming up. It's not, it's like a week away, I think, whatever the next meeting is, I believe. And um, it's going to include the 1,000 foot cul de sac, which is one crossing and one detention basin, and, um, and then the common drive, which would be, um, I don't know, maybe that'll be a paper street. I don't know if we can do a paper street with a common drive on top of it. I have no idea what the Conservation Commission contemplates in that case. Oh, I no, I mean, that would be a planning issue or a yeah. legal issue, I guess. Yeah. But I'll, we'll, we'll look into that. All right. So next week, you're up you're in front of them again. Um, and the zoning yeah. compliance, is that just the two waivers? Is that just the... Two oh, no, but the zoning. Oh. I'm sorry, the specific. 210. 210 dash 113 and 111. Buffer area, lot frontage. Yes, yeah. those two. The two acres of the zoning compliance. So, okay. Um, so, I'm just asking the applicant and the planning board members does it make sense to wrangle with those two conversations until we get step one done? I agree. Do, what do you agree? That we should wait until we get the... Yeah. the okay. Um, and it, again, I don't necessarily feel um, that... I think that the planning board is willing to um, entertain those waivers for sure for the reasons that you outline them. Um, so it's not... I'm not putting off the discussion because we don't, we don't think we can have it or we can resolve it equitably, but I think it makes sense to know exactly what we're looking at first. Um, uh, there is, um, is, it, is this correct? There's no traffic impact plan or impact? No, I don't think so. And you mean a traffic study? Yeah. yeah. Did you have that in your comments, Phil? Um, we did. We, we, I mean, it was a, it's a substantial, uh, I'm less, sorry. Less of an impact. So uh, obviously this is uh, reduced from 10, from 22 to 10. Right. So we didn't find any uh, issue with the 22 lots. Right. So it was less of a, right. less of a non-impact. <laughs> Even less of a non-impact. Okay. All right. Is that like two decades? Um, so are we agreed we could try, we could cross off traffic? It's not, we don't anticipate that being an issue. Okay. I agree. Um, <clears throat> the next one is stormwater management. Do you have any, uh, any, any, any particular concerns uh, above and beyond what, I mean, I know you've, you, the correspondence is crossing paths, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just like any of the other aspects of the project, um, we, we did have some comments. Yeah. Um, Dan provided us with some responses. I think there's some s still outstanding. I think he's got some test pits scheduled. Okay. We'd, we'd like to see the results of that uh, relative to his basin. We need to have the discussion about the the slopes, the basin, and it, there's a few other you know yep. technical things. I don't think his approach is that far off. Okay. But, uh, so we don't see any big issues coming, for sure. And it it shouldn't change with the, the previous discussion about the. Uh, conventional plan. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so we'll leave that open until those issues are finally resolved. But um, the next one is utilities: water, fire, sewer, gas, electric, phone, cable, and septic system. So are you going to be hooked up to a town water? Yes. Yes. Yep. I met with uh, John Westling, and he asked, and I said yes, and he he had given given the uh, the okay to have it before so he was just looking for an update on the plan okay um not sewer nope um and you're gonna have um a uh common septic system possibly possibly yeah. it could be for as, as as few as two systems and the other houses would be septic individually yes okay and if i may madam chairman yep. what what determines 
whether if you have two on there or three um, or the soils um, the soils are very tough um, high ground water a lot of ledge but um, you know there are systems up there there are three existing systems and we know there are areas for others with this new lot configuration in only 10 lots it's uh, it's a whole bunch easier than 24. Than 24, yeah. With the 24, you absolutely probably have to have. Yes. Um, so here's a some treatment. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any questions on uh, utilities beyond that? Just just one question on the if there is a common sewer is does septic. Excuse me, common septic. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, is there any um, reserve or anything that's set up to maintain that common septic and is that built i mean i know there's no there's no condo association docks but i'm just thinking of um Clola farm road and all the problems they've had with their common septic and with nobody having money to put into it and yeah. i don't know what's required but i'm just just yeah. curious if you how you plan to address that talk to board of health uh, a lot about that and um we're aware of they're aware of all the problems that come up so those will be avoided well the the uh, sewer lines will be, um, you know, within the layout of the road, probably in the, on the edge of the layout and, um, and done properly and not crossing and recrossing property lines. And it'll be like simple and approved by the Board of Health. I don't so. know anything about all the problems on Kalala Farm Road. So, that, so then, I mean, so who maintains it if something happens? Oh, uh, be a, the Homeowners Association. So the, okay, so the, so yeah. there will be something covered yes. in the Homeowners Absolutely. Association for maintenance of yep. it. Okay, every they'll buy into it. So that's so that's interesting that that you'd have two two homes, two systems that are included, and everybody is going to be responsible for it. No, they would be responsible for the for that. It'll the, be built that. into the Homeowners Association that those two homeowners yeah, will I mean, be responsible. Forever. Yeah, two is just a guess. Um, it, it could be we we have enough room there for eight, so. Um, in that know. spot down below yes I gotcha okay so that'll be interesting that'll be a little different but yeah it'll be worked out in the proper manner with Board of Health or whoever wants to get involved <laughs> <laughs> not me um, so was uh, Gary can I just ask this question because you were saying the property lines and everything is that part of the problem is that lines cross property lines yes and then there's also um there's no homeowners association oh. to maintain it so as they've had problems then there's been a lot of who, who pays for challenges it. associated with who pays for it there's you know is, is the person whose lot it's crosses pay for it or the people that are connected to it pay for it and you, know, you can't yeah, just pass the hat you. to take donations to good times incur some pretty major expenses <laughs> Just want to make sure we avoid that. Yeah, no, yeah, at all costs. Thing. Absolutely. So I wouldn't think that you, well, we're not going to solve that problem because it already exists. But, um, but I do know, so I, I live on a long common drive, happily. Um, but I do know that, for example, um, just you asking the question, Gary, I do know that um, one of the issues we had is the leach field went down um, along the common drive so we did we did have one instance of difficulty there where you know some use of the property that is allowed caused damage to the system that somebody else had to fix so mm -hmm. that's a, it's an interesting question and mm -hmm. uh, and important to avoid it's not trivial no it's not trivial it's a huge expense big money yeah um okay all right um so I don't think that we're done on that until we see the, the you know, how that all falls out, but it doesn't seem like there's any uh, big issues. Do we still have, um, do we still have the possibility of some of the uh, attractive uh, access to trails, potentially uh, access to the horse trails as well, or no? Um, well, uh, I think the horse trails um, is pretty much out of the picture at this stage. Yeah. Um, is that the two A and R lots off to the side there? Well, yeah, that's there's a possibility of doing something there. Yeah. But um, uh, so if you if you go up that driveway, I think if we could cut that driveway down, uh, I think you could have you'd have room for two horse for two horse trailers on the left hand side, mm -hmm. or maybe even the right hand side, and it might be on town land. 
the, the right of way is huge there. Um, but the problem is, I think they'd have to drive in and then back out. And um, and I don't, but I don't think that they wouldn't have to back on to Wood Street. I think we could avoid that. But I, I just think it's going to be an uncomfortable situation. And um, in order to make a big enough, air, large enough area for them to turn around and up top, I don't think that's going to work. Um, but certainly, all uh, the the trails on the other side are easily accessible still that there's nothing changing over there yeah they're better and, and um, <coughs> one house uh, two houses have direct access to the open space in the cul-de-sac plan mm -hmm. and so they can walk out the back door and be on open space or they're on the road in the in the town access is right you know the yeah the little town Cameron Woods access is right there just, just to Go clarify there. though so yep. the, the the horse trailer parking is gone, but are you still planning to put in other trails on the property or maintain the trails that are there now? Yes. And those are shown on the yeah, they're on the plan. drawing, yeah. all the, the... Yeah, all the dashed. Some of them are already there, the ones that are not uh, uh, dashed. Are, hmm. Okay, the ones that are not dashed are already there, and the ones that are dashed right. Right. are ones that you'll be putting in. Yep. Okay. That's... Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is nice. It's nice. Really nice. And some perimeter trails around the, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nice for the the homeowners. I was obviously nice for the rest of us, but it's nice for the homeowners as well. It's a nice feature. Just, I mean, if I may, on those trails, are they just dirt and grass that gets matted down, or is it? They, um, that's that's what uh, what we would propose. Um, Chris and I took a walk on a subdivision we did in Norfolk a couple three weeks ago, and. Um, with the town planner and um, I think a DPW director. And um, we walked along all these existing paths and they're beat down really well. They're leaves, pine needles, and um, well, so what do you want what kind of wood chips they want? Like I said, no, none. Because um, you fall down on the stuff, you know, it's slippery. And mm -hmm. I think so they, these were just paths that were easy to walk on and they were, they'd been just beat down over the years by existing trails. People walking on. So we're so we're we made a, 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 a trail head with the you know the wood chips and a little wooden border and then we cleared up some of the areas to kind of coax people into where the trail okay. we think it should be. Yeah. But um And then it would be up to the association to maintain that however they want it to. I don't or? think there's gonna be any maintaining it. It's just it natural. gets used. Just natural. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Okay. Um any, yes, I have a question about the open space. Are you, are you planning on maintaining the open space in a homeowners association? Or are you going to um, deed it to a third party, or what's your um, plan? I don't know. It used to be the planning board um, would kind of twist your arm on that. I I don't know how that how that goes nowadays. If, um, I'd be all for the homeowners to own it, but if the planning board wants it given over to whoever. I, I think the open space has to be open to the public, right, for the open space? to the town. Um, Iowa? No, I think it can be private open space. I don't think it has to, has to have public access for it to be considered open space. But I don't, I don't know that for sure. So it says, common open space in any open space landscape preservation development shall be conveyed to the town, may be accepted by it for park or open space use, or for a nonprofit corporation, or principal, the principal purpose of which is the conservation of open space, or a corporation or trust owned or to be owned by the owners of lots within the development. Indeed, it's a halt. Yep, or, or, I, or the, the last thing you said is, or it could be the homeowners association. Yep. Yep. But it, does it, and then it's listening. Con, sorry, it continues. If a oh. corporation or trust owned by the owners of the lots is utilized, ownership thereof shall pass with the conveyances of the lots. Okay. and. Did did you say that it has to be open to the public or not? Um, just says it's common open space. I thought the first sentence said that. Yeah, what did it say in the very beginning, John? It says common open space in any open space in landscape preservation development shall be conveyed. So it's just called conveyed, right? So to any of those different different groups. Uh, entities groups. so it does say if common open space is not to be conveyed to the town the applicant for the open space 
development uh, must include a program describing how the common open space will be maintained in perpetuity. <coughs> so, so it shall be conveyed to the town, and then if it isn't conveyed to the town, the homeowners have it. <laughs> organization there's yes. a list so it doesn't look like Sorry. we could do it to the homeowners association my question was just does it, is it accessible does it have to be accessible to the general public mm -hmm. sounds like a, sounds like it read a bunch of time well, still reading I, so far, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, just on my quick review, it does not look like it okay. requires that it's open to the public, but I can give it a closer look and come back. I was going to note that Halt owns the land up here, and there's an existing trail. Yeah. But there's hundreds of acres over there. Yeah. You know, yeah. With, the, with the town access. Yeah, and, and it and actually and there's there's open space, town-owned open space on both sides, right? So it it sounds like it would be very attractive for it to yeah. be you know, usable, public, open to the public. I mean, I agree. So, would that be any? Is that going to be any problem? Or? Not, at, not at all. Okay. No. So, just a open space follow-up question. Your um, shared septic is in the open space. Is that? No, it's on its own lot. I'm sorry. It's on its own individual lot. Oh, is it? Yes. You can see it in the drawings, not on that yeah, as, as not well, shown. but in the drawings. In a, in a okay, I see. A, I do see a little black line around it. Okay. And, and whatever we don't use, we'll just push onto the open space. Um, more than likely. Okay, I just want to make sure it wasn't yeah. in your open space. Uh, are there historical features? Not to my knowledge. There's, there are ledge faces that uh, have been there for a few years. <laughs> and uh, we plan to save as many of those as we can. And it'll be most, of, most or all of them. Okay. Um, it's gonna be really. It's, it's a beautiful piece of property. It is. It's just ugly. <laughs> it's just. It's just ugly to work on, probably. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. No, I'm like. <laughs> it's really, really. Rough. I got gotcha. you. Um, none yeah. of the homes to be raised are over 75 years old, right? None of the homes. They're all newer, right? Um, are there? Is there any uh, member of the public that wants to be heard on this? There isn't usually on the whisper ways, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, I think that we have um, about exhausted our ability to um, talk through the issues until beta is completed yep. and the subdivision, uh, the conventional plan is, uh, is worked out. We'll work that out, okay. I hope. Yep. Right. Anybody else? Okay. So when do, when do you, would you like to come? Oh, I bet we have to extend a deadline somewhere, right? We have uh, the continued public hearing for the definitive subdivision plan um, is due by May 28th. So we have to, we'll have to push that out when we decide when we're meeting next. Um, when do you do you want do you want the next available time or do you? Uh, yes. So okay. hopefully Dan and, and uh, Phil will make some progress on the engineering, and they have to. Right. Yeah. Right. Did you have a question? I just have a, I think a process question with, yep. with Fran and I leaving and yep. Frank not being able to vote yep. on it. So the you two, six. the two votes right. for the, um, for both the amendment to the special permit concept plan and the continued for the definitive subdivision plan, they both they one needs a two thirds vote, one needs a majority right. vote. It means that they both need the same vote. Uh, six of who will be the seven available members, right? Six of the available six. nine members, because Frank will not be able to vote. So Frank it's the two it. that have changed. Right, one, two, three, and four, Frank. Five, six. So you'll need six. Um, six and five. Six and five. Seven, six. Six. Is that what you mean? Is that right? Did I get that right? Six for the special permit. Yeah. Five for the subdivision. Majority. Okay. Simple majority. Sure. So each, right. each of them, the way it works out, each of them has one member of wiggle room. There we go. Because that's, that's, where, that's, that's where my head was how, getting. How does the six have the wiggle room? Yeah. What's that? Yes. How does six have wiggle room? So Frank technically can still vote. On the on brand new one as long as, as he as long as he watches this. Right. But he cannot on the other one because he's missed. 
two years. Two still years. Years. Right, so he can vote on the first one, the one that just opened tonight that we just talked about. Won't that be able to it. vote on the second one. Okay. That's thank you. That's where I was getting hung up. So just so you know, what's uh, what, still tight know, though, right? Most yeah. that are in front of you. So um, of the six, uh, is that is that is that six out of six? Is it six out of? Is it nine? Six out of seven. Six, six out of seven. Six, out, as long six as out of seven on the first one. The as one long as Frank doesn't miss any more yeah. right. hearings. Yes. And I will look into the. Um, so recap. before the meeting, I'm just going to say this in the public session with, with everybody here. Before the meeting, I asked John to do the research. Um, there is supposedly a way to um, continue open public hearings through the election season. Um, and use that first meeting um, that we meet after the newly appointed, newly elected members are sworn in and are here um, to just continue, not withdraw or, or close and restart. Um, and the first meeting, this is a 10,000 feet level, the first meeting would be a, a detailed recap so that all members are brought up to speed. But I don't, we've never done it here. Supposedly it's a possibility that we can do it. I've asked John to find out um, if that's true and how we do it, um, if we can do it, if the members are willing to entertain it. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that piece is in play. But usually it's not too onerous. Uh, we, we try not to make it onerous if you had to withdraw and start over kind of thing. But. All right, so when's the next, when's the next available slot? So June 10th at 9.30. Mm -hmm. 9.30 to 10. Uh, actually, we do have, uh, it's only five minutes. Yeah, June, June 10th. At, unless you wanted to start at 7 o'clock. Then you could have the whole wanting 7 o'clock to 7.35. Um, I I have a preference for not necessarily. What you had a preference? Do we have a preference for starting earlier? I do. Do we, do I, we collectively have a preference for starting earlier? I so either Frank way. Frank has does not. And Frank Frank Frank, me, Frank prefers to start as late as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Seven thirty. But okay. But I, 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 I don't, particularly in this do. one, if they need Frank to be here. Oh yeah. Um, the chances of yeah. him being here at seven are mm -hmm. less than they are of him being here at nine. Nine, nine, nine thirty. thirty. <laughs> um, so I'll entertain a motion to continue. Is, the, is, yeah. I, I, will, I will not be here. Totally. June tenth. Uh, okay. June tenth. Okay. I, so I anticipate that you could work together, and it, it, that would be. A, you know, you have substantively done the review and you can work together. To, but definitely let us know if there are big issues right. for some reason. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? All right, so I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue the public hearing on the amendment to the special permit concept plan to June 10th at 930. So, so much. Uh, I'm sorry, and I should say also the continued public hearing on the Whisper Way definitive subdivision plan until the same, t both of them move, and to extend the decision for the continued public hearing on the definitive subdivision plan to what, Kobe? A week after? June. So June 17th? Okay. So is that amenable to the applicant? Sure. Okay. So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your time. Yep. So I will entertain a motion. By the way, we are exactly on time. I'm just saying. It's getting good. It's getting good. <laughs> I finally figured out how to do this then. Um, I will entertain a motion. <laughs> To open the public hearing for 17 Wilson it, Street, the Scenic Road application. We didn't set up a site visit. We were talking. We did not specifically set up a site. We we decided that the two members that have not 
trod around that property a couple of times may go may make the point to go out with one of them they'll make okay. that possible okay yeah Thanks. so I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 17 Wilson Street scenic road application TGA solar so moved. second all those in favor Aye. Aye. all right happy mr. Sterapo yes <laughs> Uh, Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, my name is Christopher King with Atlantic Design Engineers. I'm um, here before you um, this evening on behalf of TGA Solar uh, seeking approval for a scenic road permit. Um, as um, everyone's well aware, as part of the special permit process, our original driveway location was um, revised and uh, alternate B was selected during that process. Um, and so what we've done is we've revised one sheet of that approved set to reflect the um, approved alternate location, revise the grading, uh, the equipment, uh, the landscaping, and all the notes um, just to make sure they reference the appropriate plan. Uh, it contains the same set of notes at the entrance way as far as maintaining vegetation, branches less than five inches as measured six inches from the trunk and trees, um, um, trees less than three inches in diameter. Um, and then um, that's important because those are the regulations um, that are put forth uh, for tree removal by the tree warden. Mm -hmm. um, I was in receipt of an email from John, the acting tree warden, um, and we reviewed some pictures, um, understanding that I didn't have the information immediately necessary uh, in front of me as far as the height of the tree as measured four and a half feet above the ground. After reviewing the pictures, John was comfortable with, um, and, and if the planning board's amenable to it, we could certainly have a condition that any trees that meet that criteria that are to be removed be flagged prior to any pre-construction meeting. Um, and then everyone would have a chance to review those. Um, we are in concurrence that our intent is to save the larger diameter trees that were in the photographs, um, which were mentioned during the special permit process as well. Um, and that's one of the reasons why that was a preferred location. Um, and then additionally, and part of this is um, now we're uh, required to um, do some work around the stone wall. Um, as it was pointed out, the area is not in the best condition. Um, it really is more kind of an earthen leaf litter formation with some scattered stones. Uh, we envision in, um, uh, disturbing roughly 30 linear feet of that. So, um, you know, we're um, offering to provide a two to one mitigation ratio and rebuild essentially 60 feet. Um, we could go to either side, we could go to one side. It's really um, at the planning boards. Um, you know, maybe that's an item that, you know, the final design could be as preferred by the planning board. Um, and, you know, again, we would be um, certainly trying to harvest as many of the stones as possible and reusing them, assuming that we would want to mimic the, um, the character of the original stone wall. I'm just writing that down. I'm sorry. Yep. Sure, sure. Um, okay. So uh, we, let's, we can start around the, the table. Anybody have any questions? Carol's good. Sorry for my lateness, but uh, I liked what I heard about the storm wall. Uh, two to one is, is, is generous. And um, as is often the case in some of the storm walls, if they could be made to look better, that, that's a positive. Sure. Um, Thank you. But I think that it's important too that we we we, ha we had this issue. The mimicking of the the character is really important to us too, particularly on that yep. stretch of road. Yeah. Sure. So and any better kind is in the eye of the beholder, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's, right. That's, that's a yeah. That's much. sort of yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm I'm unfamiliar with the scenic road permit process, but if you are able to put a set of conditions on, we would certainly be, like I said, willing to you know provide details as things progress as to you know we found this amount of stones you know I'm sure there are other stones within the site that we're able to reuse some we're obviously not able to um, and you know basically utilize those up front as well so yeah I, I think this the stone wall and replication is is sort of a, a, an easier one to deal with the trees 
um, are really individually considered, honestly. Sure. So, um, so that sort of remains. I, I think that if if any deviation from the plan on the trees were to happen, any trees bigger than the three inches, is it three inches or four inches? It's three inches or greater the way it's written. So okay. including the three inches, four and a half feet above the ground. Um, yeah. So we would flag them all prior to construction, <coughs> review them, any deviation, certainly notify the board. And then um, per the email, you, we'd be certainly amenable to replacing any smaller caliper tree, like kind within the right of way. Right. I think I understand. Frank, are you all set? Yeah. Um, I am addressing the plan on um, R204, um, page 204, where it shows the, um, the monuments and the equipment surrounded by the, uh, yeah. the, the planned um, trees and, and um, uh, greenery. Um, I have some concerns because of the what's there and what we like about it could also be a detriment because if you're driving towards um, legacy, I guess I'm just it's a long way away. But south. if you're going in, if you're driving, is it south? North. North. No, north. north. <laughs> if you're driving, right, it's north. Right. It's north. Up the hill. Right. So on the southern yeah. side of those that equipment, on the southern side of that equipment, it's rather exposed in my opinion, <coughs> um, because you see it at quite a range on that road. So starting, so, so starting like as you, as you approach the site um, where the existing cart path sort of is demonstrated, mm -hmm. um, I kind of have this opinion, I mean, I, we would have to go out and look at it, but that you could actually see that equipment. Um, and I'm wondering, if I could ask you, what I don't, is, should I know that? What is the dark dashed line that's on the back side of the equipment and the green ring? So, there? just to just to be clear, Deb, can I clarify? It's that bump that we're seeing yeah, as it's you the come bump. down the, the path, yeah. right? Do you want me so, to, do you want me but, hold on. I just want to make sure I'm I, I'm happy to a certain extent to ask the question because we're trying to protect the integrity of the scenic road, and this is impositional, but that is actually outside of the scenic yes. road hearing so we go ahead and ask that's what the i question, was wondering kind of, that's what i was wondering too because it wasn't actually in the verbiage but it was something no, that right. i that it's i saw the trees in the stone wall in the right of way the stone wall so it has to be in the right of way in the right of way right um okay i just said i just said yep, what no, i what, yep. what i, I just saw make... just um right i didn't think it was but i yeah. thought i was. when i looked at the plans i'll tell you that i had this you know a similar thought and um and you know i hope that you know you are sensitive to uh how difficult it is to cite this and was to cite this yeah. and that whatever consideration you can give to the neighbors viewscape is appreciated Absolutely, and I would be remiss, and I, I know it's been a little bit, but we do have a condition that allows us to go back and reevaluate the field as part of the special permit, so that could certainly be a mechanism in which the board could address that. We'd certainly be willing to, if we're going to remove three trees, I know the tree warden said replace them like kind, but maybe we can work to select a species and cite them on the southern portion of the driveway within the right-of-way to offer the screen and maybe rebuilding that portion of the wall would help to to block that view so I, I think that all of those things would be very I, I think that there are mechanisms in place and I think you know the the applicant is certainly amenable to making sure that we you know address the concerns in any any way we can so that makes me feel better too it does too. At least there's, yeah. a, there's a process I totally place. appreciate that yep okay. well, sir. I'm good. Here. My only question, and this has to do with just me reading plans and understanding them. Sure, sure. Um, so where the existing card path comes out, there's no stones. No, it's shown here. Correct. So, okay. Yep. And you're, you're not proposing to rebuild that portion, correct? Y you know, or I mean, again, we, I graphically had just shown 60 linear feet. Um, but I, I, I thought I added some language to the note, or as directed by the planning board. So it really is a function of, you know, where uh, understanding we're balancing multiple interests. Yeah. 
you know, we're really looking to what's most important to you folks. And if you let us know, you know, the type of wall, if it's important to harvest every last stone that we can, or if we source some light kind stones from a local area and rebuild it to a certain standard or a certain look, maybe on a different street or a different scenic road in town. Um, you know, I, I think that um, is something that is, you know, um, easily, easily implemented, I, I think. And if, again, if there's a certain condition that you would uh, want to put in to ensure that, uh, then we'd be certainly amenable to that. But as far as where exactly the 60 feet would be, you know, we'd be looking for some direction uh, from one of the board's representatives. I did think of a question. Yes. So you provided photographs of the trees to be removed. Yes. Um, I think we do usually ask if you could take pictures of the existing stone walls before you do any work, too, so so that we are all looking at the same photos and people aren't saying it was one way. <laughs> sure, sure. When it wasn't. Yep, yep. And I know these aren't the best just with the time of year with the snow right. on the mm -hmm. ground, so. But now they, it would be better, yeah. No. Okay. I am all set with everything that's been discussed. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. I think Mr. Kane brings up an interesting point. Um, and I know that in, in general, we've had a strong preference to use existing stones when they rebuild stones. And in this case, since they're actually offering to rebuild more stone wall than they're actually removing, um, I think, I think it would be helpful if, if we give him some guidance on what we'd like to do with that. And I'm, I'm honestly curious to hear what if people have a preference there. Mm -hmm. And then my second question is that some of that stone wall is not in the best of shape. And for me personally, I'll just share my opinion. I'd, I'd rather put potentially, and I think maybe it's worth hearing from some of the butters as well, but I'd, I'd rather put some effort into, into rebuilding part of that wall that maybe isn't in very good repair than necessarily extending a you know, somewhat mediocre stone wall. That's, that's my take, but um, again, I, I think it's, it's worth us giving, giving them some additional guidance on if we want them to bring in new material, if they're just gonna reuse, if there's, they're taking other things from the site. Okay. If I could add, if I yep. could add to that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that um, I guess when the snow melts, or <laughs> it has melted, um, to actually go out there and do a little survey and find out, I, I think pic pictures are great. Um, use what's existing and if you have to add there there are resources out there that have some pretty nice moss covered stone so I think you maybe mix them in cleverly yeah I, I think and again if it was something where the final construction sequence or final design or protocol uh, would be submitted to the board uh, you know maybe even prior to the start of construction I would think that's something they would kind of do last uh, just to maximize, uh, you know, sight lines and whatnot going in and out of the site during construction. But, you know, at some point, um, you know, we could certainly put something in there so that we would come to you and say, okay, these are the pictures of what was there before construction. You know, so maybe it's prior to the start of construction. This is what's there with no snow. Um, you know, during construction, we'll have the ability to get stuff from on site that's going to be native and local. Um, and then in the event that aren't, then, you know, they could even go as far as to even source something locally and see if they can find a, a supply of stones a certain diameter um, and then just agree upon a stacked height and width and, mm -hmm. and for actual mm -hmm. construction method. Mm -hmm. I think it would be just loose stacked, mm -hmm. you know, so. I agree. So, so I just to piggyback on your point, uh, in some areas, that's not much of a wall at all there. Right, right now. So I don't know if you know the thought was to kind of build this up. And the other question I would have, maybe a little bit of a governor, is: Are you looking to potentially build it up on both sides to the abutter on the south, as well as all the way to the abutter's lot line on the north, or is it to keep the current character and topography of what's? I think we need to give him a little bit of direction in terms of yeah, I agree. What that's gonna yeah. what it should look like. Let me um, let me just say that we need to open the next public hearing and continue it till the end of this discussion. So I'm gonna entertain a motion to open the continued public hearings on Buckland Street and Leonard Street to continue uh, to be continued till the conclusion of this conversation. Uh, so move. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, we should hear from the public before we go too much further, I think. So if any member of the public has any um, questions.
question or opinion on the stone walls and the trees? <coughs> Hello, Tom hey. Shambo, 15 Wilson Street. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I don't think I need to say anything else about that background. Um, anyway, um, the stone wall, the size of the trees, the location, Personally, I, I like the discussion that I'm hearing, and I appreciate all that's been done. If the stone wall is going to be rebuilt, um, my opinion, you can take it into consideration, is that it not be a three-foot high wall. Keep it to the character of what's been there. We can a foot and a half, maybe two feet. Also, if there's stones that are needed, there are significant stone walls in the property where they used to use it um, when it was a demarcation of a property line. So along the cart path to the left, you can see a whole bunch of stone wall um, work that's already uh, there, stones that are there for the stone wall. So maybe those could be relocated, seeing they're gonna be taking them down, um, it appears anyway, um, to, to, to preserve the character of the stone, the wall, you know, common um, um, materials and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are not 51 trees the road. I apologize, I was not able to stay, uh, stop at home and get my notes from previous meetings on the solar panel development. Um, was this the property that there was some Native American uh, interest in and had been some surveys and input from that? And are any of these um, stones on this 30 foot linear stone wall that they're planning on removing and moving part of that? And do we need input from that group that participated earlier? So I think I can answer that. I, I, I do not think that the stone wall at the, the border of the property is included. We can find out for sure. Um, and we wouldn't want to, you know, I, I was thinking about uh, Mr. Shambo's comment. We wouldn't want to, you know, move stones that are significant from within the property. But part and parcel of the permit is um, that group serving in consultation as the construction plan is going forward um, and being being part of the conversation and part of the effort to make sure that whatever is significant on on site is protected in a way that they are in agreement with okay so then i would uh, ask a follow-on question if uh, the engineer i'm sorry was it john king if he had um, chris chris yeah that's okay <laughs> If he had gotten input from his, the people he's supposed to be talking with on this, and for talking about moving stones and things that are on the property, that that be checked before any of that is done. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll ask that question for sure when he comes back. Anybody else from the public? So Chris, just for the record, uh, the stone wall on the border of the property, is it in any way involved in the Native American preservation efforts? No, we walked the entire frontage and there was one grouping that was outside of the right of way that is further north. Um, if you remember the alternates, it went, I, a, I think, ABC. But yeah. the northerly one that we didn't select, that was still southerly enough as to not impact that area and they did walk up through the frontage area because the road has been moved away from Mr. Shambo's property and basically moves through the array itself, so that area was checked where the, the alternate B comes in now. Um, and so that area, so, so there will be nothing in the right of way impacted by the alternate. I mean, as you noted, there is construction protocol in place to ensure that mm -hmm. anything we, that's what I alluded to, stones we may or may not be able to use on site to rebuild is that there are some stones we will but i believe that row extending along um, mr shambo's property line into the site you can see the panels break there that's actually was identified as something we cannot use so um, you know every effort will be made to source stones on site that aren't deemed significant um, and as far as, I'm sorry, as far as the height goes, I agree. I don't think a three foot high wall will be in character, but again, that's what, if you're comfortable with a condition that kind of the final directive be issued by the planning board, maybe during a pre-construction meeting, we'd certainly be amenable to that. Um, the only thing that I'm thinking about right now too is just sort of um, 
sort of reclamation of the scenic nature of the road where the cart path is going to not be used anymore. Um, and just being, I guess, being attentive to that in the, in the rebuild um, and maybe the reclamation of trees. I know we just talked about the, the other spot too, but um, where you're going to switch the entranceway. Yep. Um, some thought to making, you know, making it obvious that there's really only one small entranceway and some reclamation effort um, along what was the cart path. Does that make sense? Yes, yep, yep. And I think that area is, I believe it's in better shape towards our southeastern corner, if you will, right up against Mr. Shambo's property, and then slowly kind of becomes leaf, lit leaf litter in earthen. Um, and, you know, if, you know, I mean, with the construction activity out there, if, you know, we could certainly try to, cl you know, clean, if it is, in fact, just a wall covered with just years, years of leaf litter, you know, we could certainly be amenable to taking a leaf blower to it and see what's under there, for lack of a better description. Yeah. Um, that might do a little bit of good too and give us a sense of what's going out there. So um, we're certainly amenable to work with the board in whichever way you feel is most appropriate moving forward. Just, just yes. to keep this efficient, maybe yes. I, I can propose something. Yes. And that's, um, you know, I think this is just echoing off of what, what Mariel has said, but if we were to, in the rebuilding effort, if we were prior to prioritize, number one, um, the area where the existing car path is. Sure. Um, number two is, to me anyways, is to, to repair any parts of the existing wall that, that, are, that are, are deemed appropriate to make it consistent. And then number three is to make sure that it, the rest of it is, is continuous. So it's not that there's a, a break and then another portion of the wall and then a break and then another portion of the wall, but like those three things. If, if, you, if you rebuild the area across the cart path, um, repair any low line or, or you know, deteriorated areas on the existing wall, and then make it as, as continuous as possible. And if, and if you do that, then I'm personally satisfied. And I would just, if you, if I could add, in keeping with this, the character of the surrounding walls, like yeah. I'm not, you know, just yep. if it's if it's a little sort of broken down, that's what we, you know, would want to see. We don't want to see, you know, a perfectly tight terrific, stack church, sure. terrific wall when the you know the rest of the street leading up to it on both sides is a little bit. More sure. staggered. And then I mean, we could even build 10 feet of it and say, okay, this is what we're thinking based on what we're finding on site. And if you want to come out and take a look at it and say, no, I'd like it this way a little bit or mess it up a little bit, make it a little tighter, we could certainly and work something I'd like that. I'd just step to number four and just say that, you know, the trees that are going to be removed, that they be, re they be replaced um, to provide for the screening um, of, of the historic way to maintain some of the character of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think would be really nice. Okay. To the moderator, not the moderator, the chair. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, we just had our town election. Um, can I suggest that um, we delegate to uh, the DPW director to double check the wall and, uh, instead of asking these guys to get, come so before us again? I, I, traditionally, we would use the land use uh, staff. We'd okay. Say, well, what, John my point being yeah. somebody that's readily available versus coming, yes. have to come before the board. Yes. Yeah, I, that's a good yeah. suggestion. I agree. Mary, did, were you starting to say something? Was somebody saying no. you were? No. Oh, sorry. Usually we ask that the trees, similar trees, be replanted, not in the right of way, just a little bit further exactly. into the property. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah, I mean, we have plenty of room. And as you, that's where we had our kind of reforestation effort. Yeah. Um, but by pulling it back, we thought it was a little bit more appropriate, tucked in uh, closer to where the array ended up. Um, but you know, we, we could certainly, you know, and, and again, I think that the bond and the language would allow f for the board to certainly reevaluate it. And if we needed to fill in some holes, you know, I think the mechanism is there to ensure that that happens. So, do one more thing. One more. Thing. Yeah, the 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 conifers that would be chosen would be um, natural to the site, is what. Um, yeah, we would go. So they would be different types <coughs> of uh, s different types of spruce, different types of pine, um, whether it's yellow, white. Um, mm -hmm. That so that it creates some kind of a barrier, however you place them. Yes, that's what I was. You know, the tree warden initially said light kind, and those are the three that are definitely, you know, close are I believe deciduous in nature, and so you know that's where. You know, if we could work some, again, some language in that's really, you know, 
as directed by the tree warden or the board to allow a little bit of flexibility so that if instead of planting a skinny oak or something like that, we throw in, like you're saying, a spruce or something that's going to provide year-round. Yeah, year yeah. Round. yeah, yeah. because once the, yeah, once the, um, the, the, the little oak is, is taken away, there's more light where the conifers can grow. Yes, so. yeah. Madam so, Chair, yes. Can I make a motion? You can, yes. except that we should do the findings of fact um, for the criteria for the, the scenic road bylaw. The so A, the degree to which the proposed work would adverse, this is what we have to consider, the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designations was originally based. So that's this whole conversation we're having. Mm -hmm. So as long as we have these conditions that Gary will propose soon, I, th we, I think that we have satisfied that. Um, B, the necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience. Um, in, in this case, we're also, it's contemplated as part of the decision that we um, formulated in the discussion that we had uh, before, but I'm satisfied there. Does anybody have, people should object if they have objections. Mm -hmm. um, C, compensatory action proposed such as replacement of trees or walls, we've talked about that. D, the availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which would reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls. So we, we mitigated for that in the decision. We tried to pick the best spot in the decision. Um, P, yeah. um, and then whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historic values, and we have um, satisfied ourselves that way as well. And then F, consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. So this is a little bit different because we asked you to move a road as part of another um, permit. But um, this, this is consistent with the ongoing effort, in my opinion. Now we're ready for a motion, Gary. So I'll, I'll see if I can get this right, but um, move to accept the uh, proposed uh, senior road modifications um, with, I guess, four specific criteria, one being to maintain the existing uh, style of the stone wall, two, to um, prioritize closing off the existing cart path, um, first, excuse me, to close off the existing cart path, to um, rebuild any particularly low line or um, you know areas of the wall that need improvement, and then three to um, to um, maintain one one wall as as, uh, as much as possible. I didn't describe that very well, but in in please. keeping with the current character of the of the existing wall in the area, um, and then I would add. That um, that the interim tree warden is consulted on the tree replacement, Correct. and that the um, principal planner is consulted um, on the stone wall reclamation when it, when that effort happens. If I could add, yeah? the photographs will be taken before and after and submitted to the <coughs> principal planner. Well, I would like to move the motion. I'll second it. All right. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Awesome. It's a little different, this, this particular look, so let's make it look great. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> great again. And it's going to be Build great that here. Thank you. All look right. at those conifers. <laughs> All right, so we now will go back to our continued public hearing on Buckland Street and Leonard Street. Um, stormwater management permit and petition to construct a paper street. Can we take like a three minute break? Just gonna take a three minute break while you set up. I'll take, I'll take that. I know what I'm gonna do with my three minutes. <laughs> Trying to travel this week?
that putting up the pictures? <laughs> um, Siding, trim, finish carpet for the tile. Yeah. Don't know what the rest of that is. Yeah, I know. There's no traveling. Yeah, we're not traveling. I'm driving my kids around. That's true, too. I was going to say something, I forget what it was. Just, just keep it like Huh? You're live. Yeah, you're live. Oh, it's the way you up. Last bike. Let's go, man. Let's go. I know, I was going to ask you about um, the election. Are you running out of votes? Interesting. Running out of votes. Discussion. Are they done? Nice. Stuck on you for a while. Until they'll be back. Catch up the video. Like They're, um... <laughs> what do you imagine? Ghost boats. Ghost boats. Yeah, no, I... Good. 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 So you're out of that boat. You can vote on the other one if you watch tonight. Okay. All the batteries. Hmm? Yeah, that's a good six major. of seven. So that, that's the one that that you can vote on. But this one apparently you can't. But this one is I'm trying to read my writing. Um, this is two third vote. This is but anyway, the the minutes will say sure, if, sure, if, sure. if I'm wrong. <laughs> So we need you for the two thirds, but this one is just simple, a simple part of majority. But they're also waiting. But they're also waiting for the election. Thank you, Bill. I didn't. I didn't vote. Oh yeah, we can vote. Yes, sectorial people. There so many. And my favorite. I don't even think it's on here. Is that you need permission from the house? Thank you. Sure, that's I think that's just your mouse. That's my favorite. Surviving it on the TV. Okay, you're like, all right. Good talk. Okay, we're back. We're back. There's a charger. There's a beat. Uh, uh, no. We're all set? But it's, has it yep, okay. Um, the doors don't okay. open either. So, the continued public hearing really cool. on uh, Buckland Street and Leonard Street, the stormwater management permit, and the petition to construct a paper street, Wall Street Development Corp. And let me just see where our decisions lie. I didn't uh, remember to write that down, I'm sorry. So, so first of all, are we all eligible to vote? Okay. So awesome. Out on our remote. What do you think? Okay. All right. Do you want to start us off or do you want me to start off with the, uh, go ahead. Well, uh, Lou Petrosi for Wall Street Development yep. Corp. Uh, when we were last uh, here, uh, in our discussions, I think there were a couple of things that the board was, um, we were in the middle of discussing um, the waivers were a, one of the primary discussion points. And then with the stormwater management um, permit, I think the only issue that we were really uh, discussing was the f this uh, previous uh, pavement that we had proposed uh, in the, um, first 150 feet of the proposed roadway. The board had some concerns regarding uh, maintaining, um, and uh, I think that our, our, you know, what we've proposed is that the property, the roadway is gonna be privately maintained by a homeowners association and not uh, the, any kind of responsibility to the town um, going forward. So, um, I don't know which permit you want to discuss first, but let's do stormwater. Well, I, I think our outline combines them: stormwater permit and the roadway petition. First of all, are there any outstanding issues from uh, Beta regarding no. the stormwater? Yep. I think everything is. I didn't think so, but I just wanted to make sure. Unless you want to stay to the bitter end. <laughs> Um, so the, 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 um, the outlines are combined. Is everybody comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So I have that we have um, gotten through as part of the detailed discussion um, the road design, 5B. And uh, C is lot layout design. 
Anybody have any questions or concerns for lot no. layout design? Just for clarification, Madam Chairman, is it for it's for the four lots, correct? There are four proposed lots, yes. Four proposed lots. No questions? Okay. So we're going to check off C. Um, uh, remind me, how long is the dead end? I think it's... Uh, I'm just saying, for the public, I, I know we went and walked by it. We crossed that off, but I'm just... No, I, I, don't even, I don't even know. Do you know Phil offhand? I think it's around 650 feet, maybe. 650 feet, okay. Um, public safety, we heard from, um, uh, have you talked uh, to the fire department about fire department access and solve that? Um, no, I haven't, not since the last meeting, but I will report that we did uh, reach an agreement with the homeowner or the property owner at the end of Maple Street Extension to allow uh, connection for emergency vehicles. What address is that? Um, 12 Maple Street Extension. 12 I Maple believe. Street Extension. So tell me exactly what the agreement is. The agreement or is to allow for emergency access. They prefer to have a, a gate, but not a locked gate, but just a gate to discourage uh, any kind of through traffic. But uh, it does uh, provide for a connection between the two roadways. And do we have that in writing, or we we'll get that? I have it in writing. Okay. To the chair, if I can comment on that point. Of course. Uh, I think it's very encouraging that you're working with the neighbors. So, try it. Um, okay, so uh, we are on public safety D, fire department access. So we have the 12 Maple Street extension, and you'll provide a copy of that uh, agreement. Well, I'm um, not sure. I'll have to check with them regarding the, the actual agreement, but I will, will put the elements of the agreement on the plan and submit it to the <coughs> planning board to um, reinforce the agreement that we have. Okay. And what about access on the other side? Which other side? On the Pleasant Street? On the Pleasant, Pleasant Street, Street side? That's I think we one. provided a... Uh, um, turning at the, at the last meeting, we've provided this uh, yeah. truck turning plan that complies with the uh, requirements for trucks coming in and out of uh, from Pleasant Street. Okay, so I haven't heard any comment negative uh, towards to what we've provided. So just from me, two points, and I think that other people have points. It does require turning into both lanes of Pleasant Street. Is that right? Uh, I don't know anything about it at all. I know is what they, they we do show. That's the last that I know. Yeah. Is we that do it. show a truck turning plan that we provided that was based on the, di um, the uh, dimensions that by the chief provided us. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure where it's been left uh, as far as that goes. And in order to do that, you'd need you'd need to reconstruct. Um, a driveway that you need permission to do at 62 we've, Pleasant Street? We've proposed uh, on our plan to construct a, a new driveway for the homeowner yep. at their discretion. Yep. Uh, we haven't had any uh, communication with the homeowner because we're in, uh, I guess you'd call us, we're in litigation. So they're not, uh, there's been no dialogue one way or the other. But we've We've proposed it and um, haven't received any communication one way or the other. Carol. Well, it's, it's my recollection that you have to, to turn into the property, you have to cross into the travel lane on Pleasant Street. And I didn't think that was mm -hmm. allowed and that the radius needed to be changed to accomplish accessing the property without blocking the other road. I, I don't know, I can't speak to that, but I would say that for the for the types of uh, trucks that the fire department has, you can't, you have to turn into the other lane and almost off of every side street that's off of Pleasant Street. You know, I mean, the streets aren't wide enough to, uh, to accommodate a 60 foot 
ladder truck. I mean, it's just not, it's well, not, not possible to do this that. One, so. This one comes after the new bylaw that says they have to, though. Go ahead, Fran. I, I was just going to say, I think that's a pretty important piece that probably needs to be clarified with the fire chief. Mm -hmm. And on, uh, on Chamberlain Street, just as a point of information, they, they had to actually take another piece of property to make the turning radius without going into the... So is this a, uh, is this a subdivision rule and regulation, or is it... What? I think mean, it's a fire department it's a regulation. Fire, it's a public safety bylaw. When, when, uh, when we spoke with the fire chief, it wasn't brought up, so we haven't I'm we haven't quite confident it. that he'll be interested in resolving this piece of the conversation, for sure. sure. Absolutely. We, we have no problems yeah. with He's, he's been pretty um, pretty diligent about making sure that we know what we need to do. The, the only thing I can say is that uh, he did give us the uh, the schematics of his turning radiuses, yeah. and we've provided it, and I, th I think it complies with what he was asking us to comply with. So. For the Pleasant Street piece yeah. as well yeah. as now, have you done it also for Both the Both in the driveways and uh, Pleasant Street, yeah. I can show it to you. you From Maple Street Extension as well? Excuse me? On the back um, side. Maple Street Extension oh, as well? I, no, I don't think that would. That's, that won't comply with anything. I don't think. So. That's, I mean, the fire chief will want to yeah. you know, ensure that that. If the purpose is for well, emergency well, access, then I think that they want to make sure they have access to you. Well, the primary purpose, uh, I think, when chief was here at the last meeting the primary purpose of the connection is because Maple Street is currently a long dead-end street and uh, any kind of connection that we can give him to get to the back end of Maple Street extension is better than the existing situation that we there today we're not, we're not going to solve all the problems of uh, emergency access but you would be able to get emergency vehicles like an ambulance or uh, uh, trucks for police and other fire, not vehicles down there so um, I think we're you can't solve the problem completely by making the connection but you can certainly make it a better situation than what's there today so through the chair I'll be very honest and if it doesn't uh, if the chief is not satisfied with the ability to kind of have that as a secondary egress point that's a big sticking point okay. FYI. Uh, we, like I said, we've submitted the information and haven't received any comment. One maybe, way the or the chief, other. maybe the next meeting, the chief, we can have the chief attend and kind of talk to that more in detail. Yeah. Or, or alternatively, just have something in writing for the chief that he. Yep. Excuse me? Or alternatively, just have something yep. in writing that's, you know. Absolutely. Typically, we've done in the past, we've done that earlier tonight where the chief is, where we've had some correspondence from the chief related okay. to the review. Okay. Okay, so that's an open point. Um, traffic impacts from the development. Anything? There's, only four, there's four houses. It was a, it's not significant in terms of the, uh, not going to have any impact on turning traffic volumes or what's existing on the roadway today. It's still going to operate at the same level of service that it's, there today. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? No. I would. I, could. I just have one question. Yeah. Phil, any issues with that from a beta's perspective? No, no. It's uh, four four houses is not going to have a significant. Okay. It's so reasonable. we can we can cross that one and we can check that one. Okay, stormwater management. Um, impact on a butters on Pleasant Street. For stormwater? Are we, are we concerned about impacts? I, I think there was a general concern with the people that abutted the property and the fact that there's a lot more stormwater seems to be in that area and it's running through and, and just I think we need to take extra caution to make sure that the stormwater plan adequately addresses the stormwater and keeping it on the property. But if it feels comfortable. You don't have any, the beta doesn't have any issues with that. So uh, just, just to recap, um, the, the issue primarily is with the runoff coming uh -huh. across the lawn. The, the, can I? Yeah, go ahead, sure. Yeah. 
Do you have more? No, no, there's only, that's the only sheet. Okay, so, uh, so this section is, is ramped up a little bit, so it's going to cause a, 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 a barrier. I gotcha. So, um, so we just made sure that the, the house is right here, right on the edge of the... We just want to make sure that they weren't going to get inundated with slow. So, um, so we asked for grading. So he's showing grading this direction on this side of the house and then away on the other side. Okay. I just thought that it'd be wise to have a condition that said the same, you know, provided yep. positive drainage for this lot particularly. What, which house is that? <coughs> I think that's 62. 60. 62, that right? 62. Yeah, 62. And it's not really 58, it's just 62, right, Phil? Yeah. yeah. 60 and 62. I think this is 62. And is this where the, the design was contingent upon a porous yeah, asphalt? That, it's in that same area, yes. Yes. Okay, and I think last time we talked about there were some concerns, and I think, Phil, you were going to do some additional investigation on the maintenance and longevity of those um you know pervious yeah, materials. paving materials i believe maybe i'm the only one that thinks that on the side so this is this is going to be a private road right yes. right mm -hmm. so then i think sand was one of the major concerns in the porous pavement so for porous pavement is less of a need for um, sanding, salt and sand because the water gets into the pavement, uh, and, and, and when it melts, it doesn't stay on top of the pavement. It goes into the, to the, to the so it's less likely to refreeze. Um, so that's one thing. Good thing about uh, uh, porous pavement, um, provided. And, and they have the, the requisite uh, gravel section as well, so that it would uh, wick away. So, so through the chair, do you, Phil, do you have any guidance on the lifespan of these? Because that was the other concern, was that over time, you know, whether it be from sand or debris or other things, that it would so I clog up and remove, and it would no longer have its... Right, we don't, we don't see a, a huge, uh, Traffic load on this, it's got four, four residences. It's not likely to have a um, significant uh, truck load. Uh, so that, that usually is the, the detriment to, to most patients. Um, and if, if it's constructed well, it, it should last, you know, typical to a, a, pave, uh, a, a conventional pavement. And then to the chair. Yes. Right. So the maintenance of and the plowing of that would be all by the homeowners association. That's correct. Kind of manage that. We we did at the initial stages. We did submit a uh, homeowners association document. I don't know if the board has seen that, but we did at the beginning part the very of the beginning process. Of the process. Probably back in buried July. in here somewhere. Back in <laughs> July. <laughs> Through the chair when you're ready. Yes. Um, can I just get a little more clarity on the uh, the private road piece of this and what are our options? Is is it within our purview to require a public road versus a private road? I would have to look into that. Yeah, because I know we did have the the vote that we um, did not recognize the right of way, so I was just wondering. Does this fall under the normal subdivision of land rules that we have? I mean, I know we have a, a bullet point for G to discuss legal issues, but I did, I didn't want to keep going on the assumption that this is going to be a private road. Is it be a private road without is that under some? the waivers section, or no? On the outline, we have legal issues and the right to make the improvements. Is it, we have we have determined that it was not a way in existence in 1953. Yeah, we've already done that. Piece. Does he have to request a waiver to make it a public road, or, or we just allow that sometimes? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I guess I, sh I share some of Dave's concerns that, although when people build private roads, 
they say that the homeowners association will maintain it and do all the things, but sometimes the people get there and then ten years later they wonder why the bus can't come down the street or why they mm -hmm. trash, can't get trash pickup or, mm -hmm. and then we re regret having allowed the. Park or, road. <laughs> or you know, keeping the road in good repair, right. all those which things. we just had a recent incident <coughs> of, removal, yeah. mm -hmm. trying to convince us to make the road public. Mm -hmm. um, and with only four houses, I mean, I, think that's, a small, yeah. I think that's a substantial question too. I mean, because um, it's good, it, it's expensive, I would assume, to maintain a road of that length. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to the chair, to, yes. to, to John, that's. Um, one of the trickiest things we've had on the board in a long time. So uh, we would not look down upon you if you brought the chief planner with you to one of our meetings to she's discuss away. that. She's away this week, right? She's away this yeah. week, and she yeah. she gave me some uh, decision outlines, which I think may cover some of that. But it is a complicated issue, so yeah. I'll talk to her. Okay, okay. thank it's you. Really complicating. Um, all right. So the, yeah, I have no idea if we can mandate it be in a public way, right? Yeah, me neither. I have no idea. Just or, or whether that's really what we want to do either. You know, right, I, I'm not, I don't, not I don't sure. know what yeah, that is. Because in the Osma district, that there are a bunch of private roads in there, you know. So. Yeah. That, <laughs> but that's, that's maybe a, a different animal, right? Special animal, yeah. 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 I, I have um, a question like, yeah. what, what's the difference between a paper road and a way of existence? Did we decide that, determine that last time? We determined it was not a way in existence. It was not a way of existence. But what is a paper street? I, I think what we highly, paper street? I have we highly frown upon both of those because they're not clear, right? Yeah. I have notes to, to that oh, to, that address that, <laughs> but not, I don't have them in front of me. And I, I, but I remember discussing it with our legal counsel, mm -hmm. and I have notes to that question, uh, but I don't have it all laid out here today. So. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. The same, the same requirements, um, and this is to fill as well. Would would be addressing the impacts of stormwater on the abutters on the Maple Street extension. Is that right? So that the stormwater is maintained on site, and no more, no no more stormwater comes off the site into their properties. Correct. So we don't have any open issues on that. Okay. Or, or Leonard Street. Or, 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 or. Leonard Street is above. Would it be? Would it? Would it? I mean, it, it, they can't go. It wet. can't go off. Yeah. It is very wet. It's very wet out there. But it can't go on any abutting property. Additional water, storm water right. flow. Right. So they provided a. An, so, so they provided an analysis of the um, existing conditions. And they've, rep they've uh, provided, um, as, after they've done their analysis for their uh, proposed development, they've provided the swales and the uh, infiltration basin to mitigate those flows. So, so that there's no increase in runoff. Okay. Right. And th that includes soil testing and compliance with the standards. I feel like the stormwater management piece is checked. Uh, yep. Yep. Okay, and and you know one of the comments that you'd made that's in our memo, um, porous pavement and subdrain connection to be reviewed and approved by DPW. Has that been done already, or is that pending? So we we always recommend that roads be constructed to town standards because you know ten years down the road, twenty years, forty years down the road, you know that someone's going to ask the town to accept the road. So, so whether it's a private, way, a private, privately maintained road or a public road, it has to be designed to the public standards. So that's what we recommend. Yes. Now, obviously, yeah. you you know, as a private, you know, they can ask for whatever they want, um, and they can say it's going to be private forever. But uh, so that's why I, I recommend that that we have some input from DPW. You know, maybe there's a condition that says if the road's going to be accepted by the town then X, Y, Z needs to happen to mitigate whatever the, the course payment issue is. If I may, through the chair? Yes. I, I think the chief was mentioning that one of the reasons that we do that is because, I think he's referring to another project though, uh, is that the vehicles have to go on for emergency, emergency vehicles have to go on the, 
the road anyways. So uh, you can, instead of putting them at risk, uh, they have to meet the town standards. And then the, uh, the other side of it is, he also mentioned curbing could help uh, stormwater as well. When he was talking about the um, Maple Street extension side of it. But uh, that was a while ago. Yeah, so, so we haven't reviewed that, that, that extension, right, that right. connection to the extension. Um, so, and, and I would review it in, in concert with, with the fire chief because, right. it's, you know, you got to get your vehicle to be able to maneuver it. It's, there's a <coughs> steep slope there, you know. Um, so, so y yes, accessibility by the emergency vehicles, but also stormwater management, does that change? Um, I, I, I don't think it's going to be hugely significant. Uh, I mean, we can look at it because because this road is effectively cutting off anything that used to cross. Yeah. And it's being captured and infiltrated. And I mean, it's not increasing the flow here. So so even if there was a, a little bit of flow from the from the driveway, it's probably not um, more than what's going there now. Okay. All right. So I think, it, I guess I have a recommendation is that we, we hold that piece of the question for when we are prepared to vote on the road. Um, the roadway peti petition. Um, that so there might be some minor. Other issues are just obviously making sure that that stays clear during the winter, being plowed, and you know, where's the snow going to go from there, you know. A lot, there's, a, there's a few other yeah. issues that yeah. probably should be thought out. Um, so so it, it was my supposition correct enough that we could, we, could, uh, we, we could move forward with the stormwater, but as part of the roadway petition, we would be talking about those lingering issues, the snow removal, maybe, maybe additional stormwater mitigation if, if it happened. Right. So, so I have a question on that, Madam Chairman, especially, Phil, on the, on the, um, the snow removal and drainage easement, right? Because you can't, if you're going down the street, you can't push it essentially on the right at all because you're, you're right up against that property line. So you've got to move all the snow. If you're going to move it, you're going to move it on the left into that drainage easement area, mm -hmm. correct? Um, is that potentially... Uh, concern at all especially in springtime with melt or is it all just going to stay within that easement area and does it drain over to the to the basin right you see what i'm saying where would the snow go yeah. right so, Where's this? so it would probably end up down here which is fairly close to this house i don't know if they have a cellar or you know make sure pushing it all the way down past maple street extension is essentially yeah you'd have to get you'd have to get okay. you wouldn't want to put it here no, but we, you have a 10 foot uh, pathway around the detention basin that is push, we would push it in that direction. This, we, we theoretically would push it in this location right here in both directions so that the snow would melt and it would melt into the basin. All right, so basically, if snow gets pushed out to the left, it sits in the basement, basin area which is in the uh, easement, uh, mm -hmm. and then it drains naturally subsurface Correct. to the west, right? Because that's the way the topography lends itself. That way, yeah. Yeah, we, we probably want that to be in the, in the uh, BMP plan that, that shows where, you know, just so that um, in the future it becomes an issue with the, the home. Yeah. Yes, Gary. The chair, I, yeah. I guess I'm just a, a little concerned here because I, I think Phil, you had said earlier that that there were no remaining issues with the stormwater, and then just in this discussion, that it sounds like you're recommending a few other things that be added or taken into consideration. And I just, I guess I'm just concerned that none of these issues were brought up in your review previously. So we just learned about this extension, okay, and the right. potential for it. Uh, I don't know if it's approved or where, where it is right now. Right now, it's pretty basic. Um, well, right now, it doesn't exist, right? It's just, right. Right. So. Okay. 
Good. Okay. So I'm just going to raise, Madam Chair. If yeah, I'm yeah, absolutely. I, I just, I'll, I'll raise my concern around that that drainage basin if it gets full chalked up with snow. I mean, is the confidence level there that it's going to continue to go north, or is it going to continue to go down? You could go on a Maple Street extension. Those people that live kitty corner back there, they're potentially at risk if, if, because the, you got a high water table as it is. We're, we're going to make things better for them regardless of snow. So, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? We're going to make things better, better for that those people up there. Better? Yes. And better in what way? Just in terms of drainage? In terms it's going to intercept some of the flow and it's not going to go there as fast or as much. Do we know where they put the snow on Maple Street Extension now? Is it plowed by the town? It's, um, it's, from what I understand, they, the town plows it all the way up to where Buckland Street intersects. To that house, and, and, okay. and so when we talk about snow, the, we're taking snow that's already there and plowed into that section, we're going to kind of redistribute it so that it's not concentrated in one location. Through the chair? Yes. I have a question that I'm not sure where it belongs in the outline, but I okay. have a question about these plans of, of, where, the, uh, of where the intersection of Buckland and, and Pleasant meet. Yep. Um, so I'm on page 222 of our package, and it's on page two of nine of the plans that, that you sent in. Okay. Do you have them I, I, in front of you? I, I don't have the plans with me now. Which okay. page first did so you say? Two. It's 222. It's so I don't know. Your plan yeah, is up there. It's, it's, it's the, well, more or less. The thing is that um, there's, yeah, there's, it's up on the screen. Yeah. There's well, that's, that's a the, very, uh, very dark line that shows kind of the outline of, the, of Buckland Street and then I believe Pleasant Street. But then there is a slightly, less dark line which kind of curves up this way a little bit and I'm not sure where if Pleasant Street is going straight or it's turning at the point of, of Buckland Street do you see but Pleasant Street does turn about Pleasant Street does turn just slightly curve right but that line goes straight but this line goes straight and I don't know what I just don't understand it. There's also a utility pole shown in the middle of Buckland Street. Is that just the existing utility pole? Okay. So what? So what is the proposed street that you're building? Where is it the going? The proposed street that we're building is right here. And, and, and as we extend out into the right of way, we will be creating turning radiuses that are typical for intersecting streets. So it is a little bit uh, confusing to look at. I understand. I'm looking at it for the first time too, but this looks to me like this is the edge of the <coughs> right of way. Okay. This is an area perhaps Pleasant Street was relocated at one point, but this is the existing pavement that is is uh, Pleasant Street, and then this is okay. right of way that the town has the ability to. So, so your plan would be you, you'll be building Buckland Street. If approved out to Pleasant Street. Correct. We'll be so even even opinion. though yeah, yep. not even though the right of way shows it kind of ending there sooner <laughs> than Pleasant right. Street. So those two lines okay. will, must right. extend, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair, follow-on question. Yes. So I did notice that in our bylaws that we say that all roads must intersect at roughly a 90-degree angle, and that no. Um, intersection less than 60 degrees is allowed so I would ask that uh, they'll take a look at and see if that meets that requirement I, I don't think that particular 
regulation would apply to a pre-existing roadway, right, private way. Is this we have that whole conversation, and we're just through the chair. We're just playing it both ways. If it does have to go through our zoning as a subdivision, then that would apply. I don't, I don't think so. But. I'm fairly certain I verified that. Okay. Thanks, Phil. It looks close, so. I think it's about 75. Okay, thanks. I should have known the question, Matt. I'm just kidding. Good, good job, thank you. I'll check it again. <laughs> All right. Um, so in my mind, um, at least for stormwater management to close it out, we need to know uh, about the extension of that road and the snow removal. Um, and there is, is there one waiver that's necessary for stormwater? Uh, there's a whole list of waivers. Yeah, there were some conditions in there too that need to be added. Yes, but I think that we can't necessarily close it out until we have the additional information, right? So we still have the ongoing list of conditions. Um, what is section 8.4, I'm sorry, waiver from stormwater management? That was, I guess that, that was under your subdivision rules and regulations and we applied for a stormwater management permit under your stormwater management bylaws. I guess they're, I think they're both the same. Um, Do you know why you need a waiver? I don't. <laughs> it's been so long. So um, I think at the, odd, at the beginning of the process we had a little bit of concern about whether or not we could comply with as a, as a uh, paper street whether or not we could comply with all your stormwater regulations but I think um, beta has reviewed it and we've managed to comply with everything <laughs> so Phil I apologize if I'm uh, if I don't know the answer to this and I should are there waivers that are necessary for the stormwater management piece I don't believe there are uh so waiver number eight says waiver from stormwater management, and I'm, I, I don't know what. Well, if, if, if uh, Phil doesn't think we need any waivers, we'll withdraw that waiver request. I understand, <laughs> but I just want to make sure that we yeah. know what we're talking about. Oh, I understand. About. I understand. Seems, you know, it doesn't appear that <laughs> anybody I, does. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember how we did it, but uh, we, we just. I'm just saying. <laughs> so can I ask a stormwater question? Hold on one second. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, no, I, I believe. Uh, that, that's not necessary. That okay. The, they, right. they meet the standards. Okay. And Dave, you had something? Yeah, just along the, the road, the, the, the water. Is the water going to drain down the road, or are there going to be any drains on that, or is it possible the waters could flow right out to Pleasant Street? So the way it's designed is that the, uh, the roadway has a reverse crown, which means it's going to be sloped the property side. Okay. And then there's a, there's a series of swales and culverts okay. that go on the So, you, so, so you're, not no you're not concerned about the road drainage? Just wanted to be clear. Thank you. The only area we were concerned with. So I, I, I understand that we have not, we have six minutes left until we, we adjourn here. Um, if, um, if we can have the discussion um, to at least get the appetite of the board members, particularly those that are staying, but we're happy to hear from everybody, but um, ab about you know the standards that we are we we see ourselves um, maintaining for that road design. May I just read one note? You, you yes. may. From John's yeah. notes. Yes. And th he talks about they talk about an 81 FF exclusion, um, but the town council agrees that this appears to apply for that. But there's two caveats. I'm so sorry. Can page you tell 10. Me what? Page 10. Thank you. Yeah. Page 10. These, under the petition process, the second paragraph. Yep. Town council agrees. Yep. So he said there are two important caveat, caveats. First, case law has clearly established that planning boards have the authority to review and impose conditions on construction of roads yes. and utilities. So that, that's one point. Yep. And, and the second point being further down, 
Um, exemption will be applicable only to the existing lot on Buckwood Street, yep. not the other ones that are being subdivided. So the way I yeah, interpret, so that interpret that is that um, is that we are looking at this as we would look at any roadway built for a subdivision. Yes. It does not matter in my in my mind and reading through all of the information that the town council has provided us in this memo as well as previous memos is that that from our purposes this um, this is a subdivision um, it's only when it gets to the lot level that we're dealing with it as a different thing than a subdivision so the road the utilities etc are as if it were a subdivision and that's the way I understand it as well. How about you, Amy? Yes. Me as well. Yes. yes. And just to be clear, we're talking about the standards of the town for building a road uh, should be followed. I would say yes. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, just so you have your direction. Yeah, well, no, my, my understanding of the case law is that you, under 81 FF, you can apply the regulations to the extent practical given the existing right-of-way that we're talking about. For example, your regulations require a 50-foot right-of-way, let's say. Well, we only have a variable width 28 to 30 feet, so you can't... So maybe there shouldn't be a You can't there. say to us, well, we want you to provide 50, because we're not required to do that. And so at each... Do our subdivisions require 50? To, to the applicant's point, I, I think that's right, that maybe we can't hand, hold you to a 50-foot standard, but I think we can hold you to road construction. Oh, absolutely. Of the same standard as we would put in a new subdevelopment. Yeah. To the maximum ex practical, or, you know, so you folks have your regulations, and we are going to meet those regulations to the extent that we have the ability to do that within the right-of-way that we're provided with. Including, so, including varying utilities. I including <coughs> the utilities, sidewalks, all of those things that are, pr are required, but as we've indicated, we've requested some waivers based because of some of the limitations that we have within the right of way. So um, I think what we've designed in terms of your construction standards, we've designed a roadway that meets with all your design parameters in terms of gravel, depth, and all the things pavement with things that are within our, per, our ability to control, but we can't control the width of the roadway. The roadway is set. So we can't provide grass strips in a sidewalk and these things that normally would go in a wider, I don't know, what is it a 50 foot right of way or is it a 46? But anyways, anything beyond that, what we have, we can't, we can't provide. To the chair. Yes. So. I'm going to call out that if you don't go back and take another look at some of these stuff, um, it's not going to go well because you just heard from everybody around the room that we think this should meet the zoning standards. And if you're not willing to build sidewalks where there's plenty of room, well, you can't argue about the right of way. You own all the property. So beyond the first house, you can't argue about the right of way. You own the entire property. Well, you're not putting in curbing. I, I, you're not putting in underground utility. There's just a lot of exceptions. We've, we've, that I don't uh, feel. We've, we've requested waivers of the board. The board has, will take a vote, yes or no, on each waiver. And if the board says no to the waivers, then obviously we have to try and comply with the regulation. For example, on the sidewalk uh, highlighted in, in red there, we have on the one end of the road where we have four feet or four and a half feet between the edge of the pavement and the property line. On the other end, we have three feet between the edge of the pavement and the property line. So. If, you're, if your regulation calls for a five foot wide sidewalk or a three foot grass strip and a five foot grass, we don't have the ability to do that, is what I'm trying to explain. And, to you. And we're willing to work with you for okay. those where you can't, but I think there's situations where you can. But the only point I was trying to make, and correct me if I'm wrong through the chair, but if any of these waivers are shot down, the whole application is shot down and you're gonna have to reapply. No, I don't think that's what, how it works. Now, or, it, or at the well, we're at 10 o'clock. We are going to have to go through the waivers for sure. But I think that you understand that this planning board um, is pretty, pretty well established in their commitment 
to trying to do the right job for the town. And that means if you're going to build a road, that you're going to build it to the maximum extent possible in accordance with our existing bylaws. And if, if you can't, right, there's a point where you can't maybe, mm -hmm. um, then it's not possible. So just so you know what's in front of you on the road design. I, 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 we understand completely, but keep in mind that we, all we did when we started this process was refer to a previous application that this board approved. And we simply copied the same waivers that were either granted or requested in the previous application. Well, we're, not re we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. A tiny bit more thoroughly than that. Um, and, you know, to make sure we know you know, when you come before us and there's a, an addition of, a, of an emergency access, just saying it so is not the same as putting detailed information in front of us on the Tuesday before the night of the Agreed, hearing. agreed. Okay. Oh. And when you tell us, when you've been in front of us forever, that you just haven't chatted with the fire chief about the, the emergency access, particularly when one of them is, is new to us, that doesn't fly either. I mean, we're just... We don't have enough information. I understood that the information no just became can't. available to us within the last weekend. So it's not like it's, uh, it's new to us, too. So. Okay. So, so I am, uh, when is our next available uh, time for a continuance on this? Real, real quick question. Yes. Can he tell us what applicant he followed that doesn't meet these standards? What application he followed? You said you copied an existing application? The, the Box Mill application. Box Mill, thank you. Right across, right adjacent property. Thank you. And the only final point I would make yeah. is there's a there's a difference between what you want to do and what you should do. So I, I understand. We're we're not trying to get get away with a break here or there. This has been so. A late you also process. understand that there's some additional work for the stormwater to make sure it's it's ready. That is going to include some design of your emergency access, right, and your snow removal. Well, right in terms of where it's going to be placed, where stone removal is going to be stockpiled, or I don't understand what the question would be. All of the above. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think yes. a detailed plan in terms of where the snow is going to be placed, right? What's the impact of that, right? And maybe that's something you can get with, work with, with, with beta on. Because my concern, I'll be honest with you, that place is a swamp. And I, I and more snow and, and I'm sure you've got a plan to be able to make it all kind of go away to the north or to the west, which is great. But I mean, it, it, we just got to be able to see that. That's all. There's there's a lot more to the story here, so I'm not. I don't want to get into it tonight. But I, general, I if you want to continue the meeting, we'll continue the meeting. Okay. Um, I, I I was under the impression that if we complied with all of the comments that Bader had uh, reviewed. The issues of storm of uh, snow piling or, or that could be conditioned in any kind of a permit. Um, you have added an emergency access at at the fire chief's request. Yes. Perfect. We we, no, that, it's, we need to see that right, and we need we need and at the fire chief's request. And how does he feel about the the emergency access you haven't quite designed yet? Uh, and then he might not need the waiver for the dead end street if that's it's right. The emergency that's right. That's right. right it might away. help yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, when do we next have time? So it looks like June 10th has now been filled Pretty up. Full. Um, mm -hmm. the, the I-90, I-495 presentation, if it could get moved, there's a half an hour uh, at 8.30. Oh, I, we're going to just, we're going to get that one done. Yeah. So it looks like June 24th. Dave has been more than patient. <laughs> yeah. It looks like June 24th is the next available hearing. June 24th, and the decision would be then, talk to me about the holiday, how that impacts. So it's early July <laughs> for the decision. I don't know where the 4th lands. So uh, July 4th is the Thursday. So if it... After. So it, we could push the decision out to um, the first or second, right? Monday or Tuesday, and that would be okay, right? July first or second. Is that is that Monday or Tuesday? Yes. So yeah. The first would be a week after the week. Yeah. So that works. That should work. And if I may clarify yeah. through the chair, and that gives you enough time. Um, I'm asking for a confirmation that that we'll have, we'll see the designs with the new extension and reviewed by beta and reviewed by the fire chief and that documented? 
for yeah, the meeting? I think so, yeah. Okay, because otherwise we will be able to meet and we will not be able to make a decision again. So that's why I'm trying to confirm that. I understand. Okay, so 624 at what time? Did, was it the 24th? Uh, yeah, the yep. 24th. Uh, yeah, wide open, there's nothing on there. So we'll put it at 730 um, at, um, and the decision to 7-1. And before we take the vote, we have a uh, comment from the audience. Uh, yeah, Peter Barberi uh, representing. Just make sure you're up so folks at home can hear you. A couple of the abutters. Um, I think comments have been made from the viewpoint that the only obligation is to do the best we can. I don't think that's the standard. Uh, and I would ask that you ask council to do that. Certainly from the viewpoint of once you get into the Wall Street property, there's no reason why that right of way cannot extend to the property that they own and control. If it's an issue of the, the first section of Buckland, which is only limited to 30 feet, I agree, he can't go beyond 30 feet, he doesn't have any rights. Once he gets to the, his own property, he's got full right to make use of his land, so there's no reason he can't comply with sidewalks, we underground facilities, the we, whole deal. Yeah. Uh, so I would ask that you request that he provide a, a written justification. He had listed 11 waivers. Uh, your consultant identified another two, Within none of those waivers are the waivers that are necessary from the design standards from the typical roadway layout. So I would ask that they identify each one of those items, uh, the berm, the uh, grass strip, the whole deal that they take that schedule, they compare it to their roadway layout, and you'll see with the exception of the width of the pavement, they don't comply with any standard on, on the road, typical roadway layout. And I think they identified what they don't comply with and justify all those requests for the waiver. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, any, anybody else have comments? Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to June 24th at 7.30 p.m. and the decision to uh, July 1st. You're agreeable to the decision being sure. extended? Sure. Um, July, July 1st. Is there a second? All those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abs abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you. All right. So um, we are going to um, keep the, um, the Wilson Street bioretention basin on the bottom of our list. Um, and then the other items that we added. Go ahead. If I may, I think Bill is probably going to be the one that presents information about that. So we may want to wait. If he's not going to be here for one week. When are you here, able to be here next? The 24th. Again. The 24th. Oh, no, wait, wait. Where are the 24th? June, well, June 10th, you're not here. Right. June 24th, yeah. you are. All right. Um, so, yeah, we should probably... Leave it there and put a little note um, that it's going to be on the 24th. And then we should, you know what, like we did with 495, if we don't just make it a time certain and set aside a half an hour, we're just going to keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is that amenable to everybody here? Yes. Okay. So, um, so let's say 830 to 9 for that discussion and make sure that Mr. McDowell can support that as well. Um, did you want to move the meeting to 7 o'clock? Yeah, let's make sure we're all going to make it. Start time? Because then you would have that first half hour because the uh, Buckland Leonard is... Oh, if, we're, if we are starting at 7, if we're all comfortable with that, we could do 7 to 7.30. Are we comfortable sort of making that shift and starting at 7? I'm Thank against you. that. You're against that. Um, are you able to do it? Barely. Barely. Will we... All right. Question to the chair. Yeah. If we make that change, will we be um, dismissing at 9:30, or <laughs> are we moving, you know, really fair, moving up, or are we fair, extending? That's a fair question. I know. I agree. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, it meant we would end early. So you know what? I, I really think that that's a discussion that's better undertaken by the new board when it's elected. To be honest. Sounds fair. Um, so, um, so I would stick with the 8:30 to 9. 
for that. For, for Wilson Street. Yeah. For Wilson Street. For Wilson Street. Street. Yeah. So, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, as Mr. DeYoung is stepping down, I'll be the old man of the board. So, uh, <laughs> it's traditionary to, tradition to thank him for working for the past five years. I remember I was quite excited when you told me you were running in Cornell's that night. And oh. <laughs> oh. He's served very hard on this board. He served uh, long and hard uh, through three different chairs. And we don't always agree, but we always get along. And uh, we've covered a lot of ground together uh, here, Little League, Boy Scouts. So I thank you for your service. And I also thank Carol DeVoe, who I've known since 2008. Uh, when she was a liaison from the planning board to the uh, Sustainable Green Committee, we were both founding members, and that was 11 years ago. Oh, Lord. And I thank you for coming back on the board uh, at a very important time and helping us through a great deal this past year. And uh, hopefully we'll see you both on future Growth editions. Growth study <laughs> effort. Many, well, many, I'm sorry. Many. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> so, no, so go ahead. I was going to say, Carol, do you have anything you want to say? No, it's been lovely. Thank you. Um, so I had a couple things I want to say. Um, first and foremost, it has been my pleasure to serve on this board. Um, a lot of thank yous go out. Phil, you've been here, I think, since the beginning. Thank you. Um, you know, John, um, gosh, it goes back even before. Jen, um, Georgia, uh, Elaine, Kobe, you've always been around as well. So thank you guys very much. Uh, for the help and the effort that you guys do. Um, to my fellow board members, um, boy, this group works really well together. Everybody, thank you very much. Your efforts uh, do not go unnoticed. I've seen the board evolve. Uh, Frank, I think you could probably say the same. Um, this is a board that um, is engaged, um, questions, looks for the truth, and looks to apply um, the rule of law where applicable. Um, and I think that really comes from the leadership um, and I will defer to you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for everything you do. I've been, it's been an honor to serve underneath you. Um, also your predecessors, um, John and Ken. So um, I'm sure to the five people that are watching at home now, uh, <laughs> thank you as well. You're so, gonna make uh, me cry. So with that, uh, I'll turn it back over, but it's, uh, again, my, been my pleasure, my honor to serve here. So um, good luck. And good luck to those running in two weeks' time. Yes. Um, I wish all the candidates all the yes. best. So one of them who's here now. One of them is here, here now. now. One of them's on the get, board. You get props. You get props. And, so. and uh, congratulations, Gary. I, I expect a good result. <laughs> I know. I know. You never Gary, know. I'm waiting for you. I, <laughs> um, I would just, uh, I have had the experience um, to serve on a lot of boards. Um, and I've never had a better experience than being uh, on this board as a member, as a chair. Um, I really appreciate that. Yeah, you all know I made a huge pitch for Carol. I recruited her, um, and it, it made a big difference to have somebody jump in with experience um, and somebody who is as thoughtful and measured and um, thorough as she is. Um, and. Fran has been the kind of second chair that is a co-chair. I have uh, been so unbelievably well supported in ways that nobody knows, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, and I really appreciate it and I hope whoever does this job next has that kind of support um, going forward because it makes a huge difference. One final request, Madam Chair. Yes. When we finally adjourn here, I would like a picture of all of us. We never do this on an annual basis, and it would be kind of cool just to have it so that when you think back on it in five or 10 years, you're like, Gary, 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 who? <laughs> so when we're done, Phil, I'd love to have you come in the picture yeah, as well. Yeah, jump in. You can take the picture. We, I, think, I think we should put it in the, the town reports. They have some pictures of the selectmen in there. Oh, from the fall. Oh, from the fall. Oh, yeah. oh, but we don't have Phil in it. I want oh, we'll Phil, and we get Toby, and we get Johnny. And Johnny, right? right? We'll do that. All right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Adjourned. Yeah. Adjourned. Picture. Yeah.